Dallas, we welcome you to the beautiful Rocky Mountains here in Colorado. A spectacular weekend. The Flatirons just outside the stadium, and that's where the Buffalo used to roam. Some still do, but more of them roam right now on the field where we are today. This is Big 12 action. Oklahoma State comes to Colorado. They are undefeated 4 0, and can they run? Morency is his name, a great ground gainer. Their defense creates turnover. They turn them into touchdowns, and for Les Miles, a great record 4 0. Colorado, the Buffalo hoping to do some roaming themselves today. Bobby Purify, one of the nation's leading ground gainers, he'll be going after it. A question mark we'll talk about soon. Ready for some football, Big 12 wise? So are we. Great to have you with us, everybody. 74 degrees here in Boulder as Oklahoma State, ranked number 21 in the nation, goes against the Colorado Buffaloes. They are 3-1. They have lost their only conference game. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne. Both of these coaches didn't want to say, hey, this is a big game. But the fact of the matter is, when they turned away, they went, yeah, this is a big game. We can't afford to lose. Big 12 standings, take a look. It's wide open as far as everybody is concerned. It's divided into the north and the south. Missouri, Nebraska right now 1-0. Colorado would be right back in it. In the south, Oklahoma, they won 2-0. Oklahoma State wants to be there, too. They're looking for the victory today. With Ed Cunningham, we are looking forward today to a lot of ground game. Let's start with Oklahoma, who like to just take it right down the gut. Well, now, because of that game against Oklahoma, Texas, Cedric Benson went 23 yards. Vernon Morrissey now number one in the Big 12 in rushing over 170 yards per game. Got a little bit of a hamstring, 261 yards in the season opener against UCLA. And a big part of this running game, two big tight ends at 280, 260 pounds. And Sean Willis, my opinion, the, bless, the best blocking fullback in all of college football, 265 pounds. The term is stick and stay. He does it very well. Colorado, Bobby Purify is the name. 79% of their rushing yards he's picked up, but it's a big butt today. Big deal if he is not 100% healthy. He's got a shoulder injury. It looks like he's going to play. Daniel Jolly will probably start at tailback. Last week against Missouri, a couple of big 300-pounders landed on that left shoulder. Purify tried to finish the game. The rule here at Colorado, you have to practice on Wednesday to play on Saturday. He did, although he didn't do very much. And that is a very big deal, over 100 yards rushing for Purify. The next guy, under 20 yards per game. So he's got to be in the football game. The question is, let's go to the doctor about the nature of the injury, Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Gary, it is a serious left shoulder separation. Let me show you what a shoulder separation is with this model right here now. What happens is these ligaments that attach the collarbone or clavicle get either stretched or torn so that the collarbone just pops out of position. A very, very painful injury. And what Steve Willard's going to do today, the head trainer, is put this foam over that injured area beneath the shoulder pads. He can ill afford, though, to get hit on the outside. It will be a very, very uncomfortable situation for Bobby, Bobby Purify. The question, Doc, is he's going to play today. How will it affect his game? Well, he's not 100% in terms of strength in that left arm. So if he carries the ball in his right arm, he can't stiff arm with the left side. If he carries the ball in his left arm with the reduced strength and uses the right arm to stiff arm, will the ball get knocked down and will he fumble? And what about pass blocking or trying to catch a pass over his head? A lot of question marks today about Bobby Purify. Only the head coach gets to bang your shoulder, and that's exactly what he did prior to the game, asking Purify how did that feel. Well, Bobby Purify said, felt good enough so I can play. The Buffalo, there's Ralphie leading him out onto the field. And you got to go with your quarterback. There, when you come right down to it, that's where it all begins and ends. And for Colorado, Klatt's the name. He's got to see improvement every week. Yeah, and Joe Klatt last year had all kinds of toys at his disposal. Five receivers gone off of last year's team. And these young receivers, quite frankly, have not stepped up. Klatt was not efficient last week against Missouri. A big deal for Colorado is getting Lawrence Vickers, their fullback, and Joe Kloffenstein, their 6'6", 250-pound junior tight end, involved in the passing game early in the set of downs. Downs. Joe told me yesterday they've got a couple of wrinkles on first down. That means to me, down the seam with the big tight end. It has been a long tradition here in uh, the Rockies that the Cowboys chase the Buffalo. Well, today we're going to continue that, only this time it's going to be on the field where we'll see some Roman, some grabbing, some tackling, and yeehaw, some Buffalo. Oh, wild west. 
welcome you back to Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado for this the 90th annual homecoming game for the University of Colorado Buffaloes. You know, homecoming is all about rekindling friendships and memories from your college days. And today that happens for former CU quarterback John Hessler, who back in 1995, in relief of Coy Detmer, led the Buffs to a 10-2 record and an impressive upset over Oklahoma. Now, a year ago, Hessler was critically injured in a hit-and-run incident on the interstate and spent 33 days in a coma battling for his life. Well, he won that battle and yesterday came home to Boulder and was the Grand Marshal of the homecoming parade. There's a sign on head coach Gary Barnett's desk but has one word on it. That word is family. And today, John Hessler knows what it means to be a part of the family here at the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Gary? Great story that is. There's Gary Barnett, sixth season, 37-29. You see the Big 12 numbers, 25 and 16. And the coach on the other sideline is almost like a brother to him. They worked two years together here in Colorado. Les Miles, fourth season, 25 and 16 there. Ed Cunningham had a chance to get out on the field yesterday to talk about a key in this game, and it's about keys. Key to today's game is Colorado's defensive line reading the stances of Oklahoma State's offensive line and communicating that to the secondary and the linebackers. If the defensive linemen see the knuckles turn white and the butt up, they'll think, run, and communicate that. As soon as they get back in their stance and the knuckles are no longer white, they'll think it's a light stance and they'll communicate pass. The reason that's a big key is because Oklahoma State relies so heavily on the run, the secondary needs to know when it may be a pass. All right, Ed, we'll keep an eye on that today. We are ready to go. Their punter is going to do the kicking here. Jason Ricks is there, generally their place kicker and kickoff man. Cole Farden is going to be kicking off here for Oklahoma State as Wheatley and Robinson are back. And uh, don't worry about that one. <laughs> that one's caught by the band director it was in the good. end zone. <laughs> Almost a 100-yard field goal right 5, there. 5,000 feet will do that for you. <laughs> and so... Uh, obviously, first and ten uh, starting here. Colorado will be in the dark uniforms, gold helmets. There they are. And uh, we'll see Oklahoma State wearing the white uniforms. And let's take a look at the starting quarterback who knows just how important this game is. And Joel Klatt said so. And this is all about first downs for Colorado. Their goal is four-plus yards per first down last week against Missouri under two yards per first down they just with these receivers cannot get into third and long situations. Now purifies not starting Vickers is in the backfield that's Vickers and he is up over the 25 to the 27 maybe even the 28 yard line an eight yard gain Paul Duran moved in and put the hit on let's take a look at what we're going to be looking at their backs and receivers big day Jolly Vickers Jolly's a guy at 235 pounds good around the goal line Lawrence Vickers a guy that they have to get involved a lot and uh, we'll see how much Bobby Purify plays Sam Wilder veteran there the most unselfish they say in Colorado and Mark Fenton the center a key against this 4 2 5 the two big bodies inside for Oklahoma State they really like his run block second and two Clyde goes back looking long here's what they promised to do airing it out at the 30 out of bounds it is a complete pass all the way down to the 32 yard line Blake Mackey a sophomore the longest game on a single pass Colorado's had this year 40 yards and all of the coaches around Colorado have talked about this young man Blake Mackey he's the second fastest Buffalo he runs under a 4 4 40 and that's just great speed but it's making the play that has been the problem he's done this time and time again in practice for Joel Klatt and this is something that will really build Klatt's confidence Mackey the guy that they haven't had to be able to stretch the field now Vickers again in the backfield Bobby Purify their leading runner has not made an appearance yet Vickers will take it up to about the 30 yard line looks like a two yard gain and it was Ife Mawaran who moved in and put the hit on defensively Oklahoma State may be a little surprised they're big and strong up front and Nathan Peterson a true freshman from Tulsa he's really got to seal the edge for Oklahoma State we'll see how their linebackers do they can roam and during the leading tackler the last two years he's back to his same old tricks and maybe the strength of this team has been their secondary this season there they are and the key is Darren Williams their best cover guy probably the best cover guy in all of the Big 12 he's at home with a broken forearm and we've already seen Colorado taking advantage of it a gain of two so a second down and eight Vickers flag goes down on the play and it's whistled right now so they stop the play in our first flag of the game on the second down and a long seven or eight we'll see what the call is sure looks like an offensive call prior to the snap 
Ball start, number 73 of the offense, five yards, still second down. Mahler's making the call. Injuries have become important early in this game. Let's go, Doc, uh, down to Doc. What's up? Guys, we mentioned Darren Williams not with the Cowboys here, the All-American back home in Stillwater has a fractured mid-forearm. Uh, that's a non-displaced fracture of the radius, a large bone in the forearm. He'll have a bone stimulator on for the next three weeks. Hopes to be back in time for OU's trip to Stillwater at the end of October on October 30th. All right, Vickers and Jolly are in the backfield. A second down and a 12. Colorado off the draw. Not going to go anywhere there. That's Daniel Jolly, the sophomore. Paul Duran, again, their leading tackler the last two years. Has moved in, no gain on the play. And Duran, a guy who was a high school quarterback and free safety, he's eaten himself into the linebacker position. But watch how good he is with his hands, just right by the offensive lineman and wrapping up. Here's a guy who was a state championship wrestler, so very good with his hands, for a guy who really was a specialist in high school. Third down, long yardage. Third down and 13 to go. Three receivers. They put one in motion. Platt has thrown one long 40 yard completion so far. He gets good protection. Steps up left side double team and that will go incomplete. Tried to put it between a couple of the secondaries. Evan Judge the intended receiver. Yeah, it looks like Colorado with Mason Crosby who Gary Barnett says this kicker especially at this altitude he'll let him in the right situation kick a 70 yarder. He's already got a 55 yarder and a 52 yarder this year. And here he is on the field, the sophomore, six out of eight in field goal tries, 55 the long one. This is going to be a 52 yard field goal. If there is a wind down there, it's blowing in his face a little bit. That kick's got a lot of legs, and it is off to the left. He had the distance, but he did not have the accuracy. So after that, Pretty good start, especially with a 40 yard pass for Colorado. They do not convert. But young guys are going to make mistakes mentally. And the illegal procedure was the one that just put them in mud. The long pass, we saw that in their game against Washington State. And Washington State had that long play to start, and then they ended up going backwards once they got into the plus side of the field. And keep in mind, Bobby Purify did not yep. appear in the first offensive series for them. There is a young quarterback, Donovan Woods, playing in his biggest game of his young career. And 47 pass attempts overall for the Cowboys in the first four games. They've got to get him more involved in the passing. Lawrence is starting, completed at the 40-yard line and out of bounds. Good gain. Dewan Woods, favorite target, able to put it away, brother to brother on the completion. Be shy of the first down. Let's take a look offensively. More of Morrency. And Bajima as well. You've got Sean Willis. We talked about him in the open. Bajima's 265 pounds. And this offensive line, very big, very physical. It'll bring up a second down and a four. With the ball spotted up at the 42-yard line. Willis in the backfield with Morrency. Willis is the big blocker, 37. He's the man in motion. Morrency will often follow him. This time goes the other way. Morrency bounces off one, and that will be a no gain. Well, the defense will be called on to make those kind of tackles, and uh, there's a line that will be tested. And Vaca Manapuna is what the Cowboys think is the best defensive tackle they may see all year. Very explosive and athletic. And the linebackers, they'll have to make tackles today in this game to be successful. And I think in the middle of the third quarter, we're going to see what these guys are made of because it's all about that fullback for Oklahoma State. On a one-on-one -on -one back there for Colorado with that secondary. Tyrone Henderson, a couple of pickoffs so far this year. And a third down and three for Oklahoma State. They run the football all the time. See if they do it here with Morrency in that backfield. Wow, rare. Coming out with a whole different look. You would not expect this from Oklahoma State. An empty backfield shotgun. And it'll be taken. No, uh, no. Whistled. Timeout was called. Timeout was called by Oklahoma State before the snap of the football. So they use their first timeout literally at the moment of snap. Yeah, it was Luke Frazier, the topside receiver, who maybe thought there was an illegal formation, but that's a shame because that looked like it was going to go for 10 or 15 yards, an easy first down. Well, we'll see whether or not that plays as far as the play itself is concerned and the use of uh, the timeout here. We'll be back. It'll bring up a third down and three when we return. Oklahoma State 45 percent effective on third down conversions. This is a third down and a three. They're at their own 43 yard line. Lawrence in the backfield. 
A lot of people in the box. Lawrence, the key, got the first down to midfield. 40. lawrence has got room. The 20. Down to the 10. Lawrence, touchdown! Eight yards. Well, Mike Hankwitz, the first year defensive coordinator for Gary Barnett, said that Oklahoma State does a really nice job. It's really kind of old school Big Eight football. A lot of teams now spread the field using wide receivers. OSU has three big body tight ends. That time they had Charlie Johnson lined up on the wing. That gave the extra gap. Colorado, with these smallish young linebackers, did not shift to the other side when Frazier, the wide receiver, came, and they were outnumbered on the strong side of the formation. Jason Ricks for the extra point. It is up, and it is good. Morency now has seven touchdowns on the ground. He is third in the nation in yards per game at 176, and he just showed you why. The touchdown puts him on top. Now you got to struggle against a defense that also has some offense in it when we come back. College football is brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American Revolution. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. And Bud Light Fresh Smooth Reel. It's all here. What a beautiful day here in Boulder, Colorado. It's been a spectacular weekend. But right now for the Buffalo, that's not a pretty sight. Lawrence ending up the three play 66 yard minute eight scoring drive on that great run. Cole Farton will do the kicking. Oklahoma State kicking off here. It'll be deep again into the end zone. And again, that one's going to bounce back. Touchback. Well, I was talking about on that run being outnumbered. This is just a huge mental error by Colorado. When you have a wing tight end, one, two, three, four defenders to the strength of the formation, that's just not enough. Watch Akarika Dawn, the middle linebacker, as the receiver comes over. He's pointing into the backfield. I, I think he's trying to call for a penalty. What he should have been doing is bringing a safety down, or he needs to shift over to the strength of the formation. They're just flat outnumbered. That is a mistake Mike Hankwood said. We are going to risk outnumbering the strength of their formation. That time, they were outnumbered. Again, we do not see Bobby Purify in the lineup. Vickers and Jolly in the backfield with Platt the quarterback, so their primary runner not in there. Action play. They get it to the back coming across near side. That'll be shy of a first down, but a pretty good gain. Lawrence Vickers taken down by John Holland. And while our crew with John Saunders is in Dallas, Sam Ryan's hanging tight in New York. Sam. Gary and our Taco Bell update to the SEC Tennessee at Georgia freshman quarterback Eric Ainge owned one as a starter puts his team up early 22 yards to Brett Smith waiting quietly in the end zone seven nothing balls first quarter Gary we're going to send it back out to you now. Thanks uh, very much Sam and here's seven nothing Colorado trying to get the offense going a second down only a yard to go for the first down flat. Goes first man through. That'll be a first down. Ball moved up to the 35. And Vickers, the junior, on the carry. Let's get an update on some injuries we've got here. Doc, what do you got? Guys, Bobby Purified definitely wants to play. And I've just told, been told by the bench that he is available to, if needed today. They would like to be able to hold him out and move the football without him. So he is available to play. Now, a moment ago, Evan Judge came off the field with a dislocated thumb was taken to the locker room it was reduced and he is back in the ball game now split on the left here back in the ball game after having his thumb fixed after a dislocation Gary? and you just saw him there nice doc purify walking along the sideline first down at 10 Colorado they've gone to the air more here in the first quarter than they have almost the entire season already and that was Evan judge the intended I think Bobby purify should sit this one out I just don't think Lawrence Vickers is a very capable back Daniel Jolly does a nice job when he gets in there it's a long season here's a young man who had to redshirt last year because of a high ankle sprain did not want to sit out more football but I just think with Vickers running the way he is early you leave Bobby purify on the sideline and don't let that shoulder get injured any more than it already is all right Vickers in there Clats two for four 49 yards. They have three receivers off to that right side. Vickers in the backfield can also act as a receiver. It is a second down and 10. Oklahoma State moving those safeties up close. Vickers maybe gets a couple of yards on that play. Tough running against a, a front that will be tested today for Oklahoma State. Great to have you with us, everybody, here in Boulder. 
This is the homecoming for the Colorado Buffalo. They lost in their opener in conference play. They are 0 and 1 while Oklahoma ranked number 21 in the nation. They won their first Big 12 conference game and they're trying to go 2 and 0 and stay up there at the top with Oklahoma University. They've got the 7 nothing lead early in this game. A third down and a seven for Colorado. Ball spotted at their own 38 yard line. Clap straight into the pocket, completes it, but that's going to be shy of a first down. Joe Kloppenstein, who we talked about, who needs to get into the play, gets five on it, but Pinson makes the tackle. And what a great read by Lawrence Pinson. You know, they only they play a 4-2-5, so Pinson, who plays the weak side linebacker away from the tight end, he was out covering the flat. That looked like it was going to be an easy first down. Pinson did a really nice job of peeking back inside, knowing that big number 89 was running that drag. That's just recognizing a formation. Torp coming on to do the punting here. John Torp, look at Colorado. It's spreading people out here on the punt situation he averages 43 yards per kick see whether or not they try anything else here Prentiss Elliott is back they do not have their lead return man for Oklahoma State so Elliott's out there and he gets hit immediately fumble yeah. they didn't give him the right to catch the ball and that will go to Oklahoma State he got hit yeah. almost before the football got there and that's the reason for the flag and I believe it was Jarrett Buell who got there just a little bit early and this is a true freshman good 50 yard punt yeah there's Jared Buell number 31 timing it up but you know he makes a mistake you've got to come under control you've got to get under balance they call it breaking down I know he wants to go for the big hit and cause a turnover but if he breaks okay. down they're going to be inside the 10 now On they the get a 15 yard penalty going to be out near the 30 31, 15 yards from the spot of the foul Another big penalty, the second against Colorado. One, they had a drive going, and then they ended up with a five yarder. This time, what would have been good field position will be lost in light of this penalty. Don't forget, Monday night, join Al Michaels, John Madden, Lambeau Field, the site, Tennessee Titans, Green Bay Packers. At halftime, you can catch the debut of Tim McCraw's new video celebrating 35 years of Monday Night Football. That's Monday night, 9 Eastern, right here on ABC. Well, we saw a couple of new wrinkles in this Oklahoma State offense. It almost looked like OSU 03 with yep. Josh Fields at quarterback. Donovan Woods, a young man, he has some abilities, some accuracy issues, but right now it looks like they're going to try to let him throw. And he's trying. He pumped once, now wants the other way. The receiver circles, pushes the man off, but it's incomplete. And there was some interesting action going on on the far side of the field that time as receiver and defensive coverage got knotted up and there was a lot of pushing and shoving going on. But this is something that Mike Gundy, the former great quarterback at Oklahoma State, now the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, has to work with Donovan Woods. He told his receiver to break deep and he threw a flat ball. Yeah, if you're going to have in a scramble drill your receiver break deep, you have to put air on it so your receiver can adjust to the ball. Luke Frazier came off the bench, was the intended receiver on the incomplete second down and 10. Woods talking to his backfield, Morrency 30. He's just impossible to bring down. Boy. That'll be a first down. Can he ever run? And because he runs so well and so often, the offensive line. Every game is tested, and one of the big men, Sam Mays, loves every minute of scrunch, big-time football. What you see is what you get with us. Um, we're going to come out and just play our, our style of football. We're going to come out and uh, you know punch them in the mouth and see how they react to it type thing, and that's what we want to do. You know, That's how we do it every other team. Right now, Colorado's got a bloody lip <laughs> because they are running downhill. Three carries, 71 yards, Morrency. Woods looking, wants a lob. This one down at the 30-yard line. That will be caught at the 20 on the interception. And back up over the 21 to the 22, Lorenzo Sims, known as Spider-Man, comes down with that one. They cast a web on a pretty easy catch. That ball, Donovan Woods, he just doesn't have all the throws yet. He's got a lively arm. This ball, he tries to get way too much air on it because he doesn't throw a tight spiral. It fades. It's almost like a punt. It's coming back towards the middle of the field. And this secondary has been really, really thrown on this year. Over 300 yards given up. That a big turnover on a poor throw by Oklahoma State quarterback. Oklahoma State now has only had two turnovers as they are up in the top in the nation as far as plus minus and turnovers. The other one was on an interception, and so is that. So Colorado gets the ball back first and 10. Ball will be spotted at the 21-yard line. Platt 
Sends the man in motion. Let's see what they do on first down. First downs have been a problem for him. They've had the running game, and that's what the defenses have been going up against. Vickers, a jolly rather, gains three on the first and ten. And if you're Oklahoma State, you know it doesn't matter if Bobby Purify is not in the ball game. Be it Jolly Vickers, Crawford, one of their young freshmen they really like, you are going to get a heavy dose of the zone inside and outside running play. That time, it looks like it's not going very much. But all of a sudden, that right side of the line, Terrence Burrow, all those guys, they just, it's that stick and stay I was talking about at the beginning. They just keep a hat on a hat, and all of a sudden you pick up three and four yards. Dusty Sprague, an extra receiver, comes in. He's the man in motion. Second down and seven. Platt again going to the sidelines. Caught out of bounds. That'll be a first down. Good play, Evan Judge. He got two steps beyond the marker and hauled it in. Well, and it's kind of interesting to see Evan Judge how he catches this ball. Remember, Doc said he went in and had to have his thumb reset. Watch how he lets this ball get in, does a nice job of dragging his foot. And, of course, last week against Missouri, TD or not TD, we watched the replay a couple of times. Looked to me by rule it was a touchdown, but maybe that was karma coming back around from 1990 when Colorado got five downs at Missouri to win the national championship. He is their leading receiver. Bobby Purify is in the game for the first time. Purify is a lone running back. They slot it to the left side, fake to Purify, go weak side, and a little screen to Vickers. Vickers trying to get loose is driven out of bounds at midfield. Well, they use Purify as a decoy and get a 14-yard gain, setting up the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And here, this is, what a great job to, to get Purify on the field so that he is just an absolute decoy. And Vickers, they, the coaches said, we've got to get him involved. But watch, after he catches this ball, watch the receiver on the outside right there. That's Blake Mackey, a young man that has a ton of ability, and the coaches have said, this is the old coach's cliche. We're waiting for the light to go on. He had that long catch down the field on a little underthrown ball, and that time fighting to get Vickers in the open field. Maybe Mr. Mackey's light just turned on. Clay Coe is being helped off the field. The nose guard for Oklahoma State. He had to be helped off as he went down. That's the reason for the delay here. There is Coe. So they lose the big 6'2", 295-pound senior for the moment anyway as he goes to the bench. Bobby Purify you saw back in the huddle it'll be a first down and 10 and we'll see how much Colorado goes to the air they've got Vickers and Purify in the backfield two receivers to the near side wide side of the field Platt Purify first carry Purify a little room Purify with the bad shoulders he'll have a gain of about eight before Jamie Thompson brings him down well he looked pretty good there didn't he he, so uh, much for my down. theory. <laughs> Watch him at the end of this run. Oh, that left arm's dragging, though. That's, uh, I, I would be surprised. You see how he's favoring it as he walks off to the sideline? And it, it, a run to the right called by Sean Watson. Well, you know your running back's going to get hit right on the shoulder. And that was a really strong so shot by the safety coming up. If you're going to do anything, I'd say toss it to the left because that went right on the shoulder. And we saw Purify walk off, and it looked like he had the old dead arm. Second down and one as Colorado has moved it into Oklahoma State territory. Try and go straight. Flags go down, nullifying the carry. Looked like Brian Williams was a little early to the party. Little movement in there, so we'll get another whistle. This is uh, the last thing Colorado needs now. Start piling up these penalties. Let's check in uh, with Doc again down on the field. They've told Bobby Purify that when you run the football, you need to duck down and make sure you take contact on the top of the shoulder pad. Where you don't want to get hit is exactly where he got hit a moment ago on the outside of the arm and penetrating against that separation. That's what they can't protect, and that's why it was very painful as he came off the field a moment ago. And, Doc, that's a great point, and the, but the problem is you can tell a kid to do that all, he, all you want, but his natural tendency, and you saw it against that safety, is to throw a forearm with the left arm and duck the head and try to run him over, which he did. And, I'm, you know, it's just, I don't know how much more you want to play, Bobby Purify. It looked like he was re-injured that shoulder after that hit. Vickers comes back into the backfield. Purify out, second down and six. After the five-yard penalty, Vickers out of the backfield. Trying to run student body right. Gets driven out of bounds and a late flag for a late hit. And there's a big penalty against Oklahoma State. An unnecessary hit. Oh, yeah. And that's because Vickers refused to go down on the sideline. So those two penalties are going to offset themselves a little. Colorado will get the advantage of it. Well, that's not very bright now, is it? That looked like Vernon Grant, the strong safety. I mean, well, maybe, his maybe, maybe his contacts fell out. And he didn't see that Dead Vickers ball. was five steps out of bounds. Personal foul. 
Vickers is rising to the occasion yes, here he early in this 20, game, India. Boy, he just, he, I mean, we've seen him run a bunch. And Gary Barnett says he's a good tailback. He's a great fullback. I mean, this is a guy, a versatile back. They actually call him a VB that will play in Sundays because he does on Sundays because he does so many different things. But that just not a very bright play by the strong safety. So that brings up a first down and 10. Colorado moving into Cowboy territory here at the 29 yard line. Bobby Purify is back in. Oklahoma State only had 14 penalties in the first four games. Well, they've started uh, not well in that department here. Three wide receivers purify the lone back. They fake to him. He's looking downfield and a slip, or you would have had a completion. Came straight down the middle, and Mackey was absolutely open. And as he turned on a little button hook, he fell down. It's one of the hard things we were just talking. We've talked a lot about this young man, a lot of ability. And Sean Watson, the OC, has been just saying, I've waited, I've waited. And that time, as he comes to, to, to throttle down and come out of his break and clap through that ball right on time maybe it was going to be a little high but you've got to learn especially on a grass field when you may slip and get your balance under those feet a little more note that Colorado's throwing on first down they have not been doing that in their first four games this is a second down and ten again Bobby purifies got some room tries to come back He'll take it down to the 25 yard line for a four yard gain for Purify. Robert Jones and McGee moving in to put the hit on. Boy, th this offensive line from Colorado right now is really getting a lot of push. Just watch the white shirts at the snap of the ball. They're all going backwards. That's Fairly conservative call on second and 10, but you almost pick up five yards. That shoulder hurts, you can tell. Yes. Huh? It, it hurts. I, you know, I, I know he does not want to sit out, and I know he's begging the coaches, but at some point I think Gary Barnett and his staff has to say, Bobby, let's get those shoulder pads off. Let's start treatment right now, today, to get you ready for the rest of the third season. Third down and six. It is the eighth play of this series. Big third down. Third and six. Vickers in the backfield. Platt looking uh, in the middle. They've got it. It is not going to be enough for a first down. Monte hauls it in. Ron Monte's first reception. And we will check in as they mark the football with New York Sam Ryan. Sam. All right, Gary, our Verizon wireless update to the Pac-10. We go a couple of undefeated teams. Cal at USC. Matty Liner doing it early for his team. Five-yard hookup to Lendale White makes his 7-0 Trojans. USC's won 13 straight overall since last year's loss to Cal. Right now, Gary, we're going to send it back out to you. Sam, here's another big play. This is a and I like it. Fourth down and one. Fourth and one. I really like this decision by Gary Barnett, and I would do something where your quarterback maybe misdirects here. Bobby purifies second man in the backfield. They fake to him, looking for the play action down the middle. It'll be incomplete. Oklahoma State holds, and they will get the football. Kloppenstein was the intended. On the fourth and one, they do not convert. And that's just great coverage. I believe it was Paget McGee in there as a nickel linebacker doing a really nice job on Kloffenstein. And the only thing that Joel Klatt can do is throw this behind his tight end. Boy, this is just really good defense. And this is something that Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator of Oklahoma State, said we have to be ready. Our defensive ends, our young defensive ends, because they move the pocket so well with Joel Klatt, that time Klatt could not get the edge and had to throw it before he wanted to. Oklahoma State, their secondary, as we said, the strength of their team. And they have held on here. So Oklahoma State takes over first and ten. Ball is at the 20 yard line. Donovan Woods looking back goes deep into the backfield and good defensive coverage right there for a loss on the play. Right there is Brian Ewu. Ewu moved in from the linebacker position to put the hit on. Ewu a guy who struggled with a couple of injuries this year. He had that high ankle sprain against Washington State. Really nice job. He's on the left side of your screen. Just outruns the tight end over there to block him, Billy Bajima. And this guy who was came in as a safety and went to linebacker. He's just he's it's like de-evolution. He's working his way towards the line of scrimmage. Lawrence doesn't get cast for losses very often. One loss there, second down and 11. The freshman Donovan Woods at quarterback. Colorado moving people into that box. They again go straight up the middle, and again, that's who they're keying on, nowhere to go. Jason Ackman came in and put the hit on a three-yard gain. Prior to that, Brian E. was 600, uh, a six-footer, rather, 220-pound junior. And that's what they have to try to do with these undersized linebackers 
is they have to try to get with the defensive front Matt Machesny and Vaca Manapuna in the middle have to solidify the A and B gaps so these guys can run laterally and make tackles and not have to take on Sean Willis their fullback third down they've got four receivers on this third down and eight as they will work it out of the shotgun and a quarterback keeper on the draw and shy of the first down by about a yard or two Ewo again moved in and put the hit on. Well, they spread the defense out, but Donovan Woods could not get the first down. And a real job, a real nice job by Mike Hankwitz and his defensive staff having his defense ready. They are reading quarterback run the whole time. This really not even a draw. He just took off. I wonder if he should have maybe delayed for a half a step, and that would have made the linebackers at least think it might have been a pass. Cole Farden doing the kicking back at his own 15 yard line. This is a long kick down to the 20. Robinson is hit. And the flag will go down. Tit for tat. Prentice Elliott. A 51 yard kick. And Robinson never got a chance to haul it in. It's such a dangerous play. And this is something that the officials have been trying to. This is a defenseless player in Robinson. Gary Barnett going over to check on him. And a true freshman who got hit on the last one you just mentioned, Gary. <laughs> That's where you can get hurt. You know, 15 yards is, is a long penalty. I almost think plays like this, there, there needs to be a bigger penalty. I mean, that's a defensive player. We, you try to protect these guys, something else has to be done. 7 0, Cowboys leading. 7 0 lead. Lawrence with a big run. That is put him on top. Colorado, though, has got the football, and in light of the 15 yard penalty, they will start at their own 33 yard line they have been passing the ball on first down in this game something they were not doing coming in for this football game they had run 84 times and passed only 35 in first down situations in their first four games 84 to 35 let's see what they do here Platt's got three receivers two to the wide side he'll send him in motion Vickers is in the backfield Bobby Purify not there Vickers on the carry room off tackle and he'll go forward for about four. Tackle made by Jamie Thompson. You know, Gary, at the top of the show, we were talking about heavy and light stances. Well, Sam Mays at 330 pounds. He's almost always heavy. But look at that stance. There is no question. Brandon Dabdub, the defensive tackle, reads run, makes a call that everybody knows it's run, and that's why this play is stopped short of the first down. Sam Mays, a senior, has to lighten up in that stance, shotgun formation, give the look at least of a pass so that then the Colorado defense doesn't play the run so well. Vickers and Jolly in the backfield on a second down and six. They fake it, rolling out. This is where he's been going. Complete. Oh, my gosh. No. And the only reason it's not is because Klopfenstein got absolutely leveled by Robert Jones. Whoa, but we've seen some shots here in this first quarter. And when you're playing zone coverage, a lot, Oklahoma State plays a lot of three deep coverage so that Robert Jones was the underneath corner there. He has a guy backing out to cover him deep. He's just sitting in that little flat area. As soon as he sees action coming his way, he's going to look for anything coming. And we saw earlier when the linebacker saw Klaffenstein coming, break up the play as well, make jo the tackle before the first down. Jones felt that one off. 0 for 3, third down conversion so far. Here's a third and a six. Flat, drop, three steps back. Incomplete, intercepted, no, incomplete. It bounced at midfield, and Dusty Sprague, the intended receiver, would like to have that one back again. Well, and Joel Klatt would really like to have that one back. That was not a good throw. Platt, who, you know, he's one of those hot and cold guys. There are games, uh, uh, North Texas, who obviously not quite the quality of opponent as Missouri and Oklahoma State, where he was up around 80% completion. Balls were thrown right on the money. And right now, today, he's throwing a lot of balls behind his receivers. Interesting that Prentice Elliott is back for Oklahoma State to take the punt. He's the same guy that hit <laughs> on the coverage the last time around too soon and got a 15-yard penalty. Well, I think it's a little punishment from Les Miles. Maybe he'll take a big shot. John Torp, who can kick the football at the 25. Elliott's got it. He wants to go, and he's going to go maybe for a couple of yards return. That will be about it. That was Jason Ackerman, 38-yard punt and a two-yard return. Ackerman on the tackle. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each 
of the university's general scholarship funds. Wait, that's so each of them get a thousand. Each. Gotcha. That's right. I always get confused on that. I understand. That's why I slow down and make sure you get it. <laughs> a first down at 10 ball at the 29. Pretty good football game. Let's take a bigger view here, Ed. Yes. I mean, the defenses are holding up pretty well both ways. And the offenses, you know, quite frankly, uh, Oklahoma State, other than that one quarterback run play, which I thought was really tipped off by the offensive line, I think they've opened it up quite a bit from what you've seen in the first four games. First down and 10, and right at the line of scrimmage, no go there. Colorado answering <laughs> Seymour Shaw out of Oklahoma City. Coming off the bench that time for the carry, and uh, is going to go, well, we'll see where the spot is, but virtually at the line of scrimmage here for a second down. What a great job of timing the blitz by the linebacker. He just, there's no way the offensive lineman, the right tackle, he just can't get leverage on it. Lawrence I believe that's Thaddeus Washington yeah. coming in there and making a great play from the linebacker spot. Lawrence in, Shaw's out. A second down and a 10. Ball at the 29-yard line, original line of scrimmage, quarterback keep. That's another yard, and that's all you're going to get there, Donovan Woods. And it was Manapuna, the junior, who moved in the nose tackle and put the hit on. And Manapuna, a guy who he was really struggling here for a while and kind of contemplated making a position change, came back and he was refocused, rededicated. And Oklahoma State said, this is the best inside player we have seen all year, and he may be the best one we're going to see for the rest of the year. Not a lot of carries for Donovan Woods coming into the game only 32 he's run it a couple times here today and we completed the first quarter the only touchdown Vernon Morency on the long run that has uh, put seven up there for the Cowboys and that's the way it's going to be at the end of the first quarter college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations you're watching ABC Sports Championship Television Boulder Colorado. Watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. Oklahoma State, 81 yards rushing, total of 88 in the first quarter. Colorado, 44 rushing, total of 126, 82 passing, unusual for them. Third down and eight. Oklahoma State looking for the first down, one for two, third down conversions, add another, driven out of bounds at about the, well, hang on, that's nope. going to be close. Yeah, I don't think he got it. That was a really nice tackle over on the sideline. That's going to depend on the spot, but I agree with you, Ed. I think he didn't get it as Prentice Elliott. Burrow came in and put the hit on, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. They missed it by a yard or two. Well, and we're used to, after studying Colorado, and this is our second game doing him, that Colorado secondary has had some tough times tackling. They're not the surest tacklers, tacklers yet, young guys. So it looked like Elliott was going to get it, but that was a good finish of the play by Burrow. And Cole Farden on to do the punting. He'll be standing back at his 25 when he gets a foot into it. Farden gets it off high, deep kick. Robinson lets it go, and it will bounce into the end zone. So they'll bring it out after a 63 yard punt. For a first and ten, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And really, the only thing that's happened offensively for Oklahoma State was a misalignment by Colorado. Now, I'm not saying they wouldn't have scored if they'd had an extra defender in the box, but Colorado did not adjust to the strength of the formation, and Vernon Morrissey takes it 52 yards. And then after Mason Crosby had already missed a long field goal, I thought wisely that Gary Barnett decided to go for it on fourth and a little over one but it was just really good defense especially by the young defensive ends by Oklahoma State on the bootleg to make Joel Klatt throw the ball before he wanted to Colorado's got the ball back on their own 20 yard line first down and 10 it'll be Vickers and Jolly in the backfield not purified here's the play we've seen continually a little rollout pass 25 up to the 30 and driven out of bounds out of the backfield Lawrence Vickers with a reception and a 10 yard gain well you just get a feeling that this junior 6'2", 240 pounds. My day. Yeah, one man's loss is another man's game. Bobby Purify, you just have to feel for the guy. He missed his first senior year last year with a high ankle sprain. He had the shoulder separation last week against Missouri. He's tried to play a little bit, but he is just not healthy. And this guy is just running with a purpose. Vickers, there you see the numbers. Purify has come back in. Vickers, three receptions for 40 yards. Purify is now in the backfield on this first down and 10. Ball at the 30-yard line. Purify the carry. And Purify will gain about three on that one. Three or four on the carry. Pinson on the hit. Dr. Jerry Punch. 
Guys, good news for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Their big senior nose guard, Clay Coe, a mild left knee sprain. They're going to put a brace on it and try to get him back out. They can ill afford to lose him. He is the anchor in the middle of that defense up front. Well, and it's a big deal if they lose him. And we were talking to Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator. They only have three bodies that they can rotate in at that defensive tackle spot. And one of them, true freshman Walter Thomas, who is just a wall of a man, has had to play quite a bit, but they need Coe's leadership in the middle. Second down and uh, seven. Two receivers, left, one right. And let's see what they do with it. Well, the clap will go in the air again. And again, the fake drops into the pocket, wants to go deep, has a man open at the 30, but it'll go incomplete. Ron Monte trying to shove the defender off yes, and get to the did. football and <laughs> did one, but not the other. And you almost think if he wouldn't have spent so much time trying to push off, if he would have run through the football, he might have been able to catch up to it. But Clad is just, he's not found that rhythm. And, and I've seen Joel, I saw him a bunch last year. I've seen him three or four times so far this year. He is a streaky guy. Former baseball player, he's kind of still in that streaky hot mold. Great to have you with us. Led Cunningham, Dr. Jerry Punch, I'm Gary Thorne, number 21 in the nation. Oklahoma State Cowboys on top 7 to nothing against Colorado. But it has been a tough game so far for the offenses to get going. Vickers in the backfield, third down and seven. Platt looking, little come in fast, no way, incomplete. They had read that one. Mackey wanted a call on it, thinking he got hit by John Holland a little early, but there is no fly. Bill Clay, the longtime defensive coordinator, University of Alabama, Birmingham, brought a very defense to Oklahoma State. They run a three, they run a four-two-five as their base, and then you get in third long, and they go three-three-five. And they can either run brackets on both sides of the field. Or they can bring corner blitzes. That time, a corner blitz, and it looked like Colorado had a nice play called, but good reaction by the guys who were left after the blitz. The defenses are having the better of it so far here in this first half. It brings up a fourth down and seven. John Torp is back to kick. Prentice Elliott back for Oklahoma State. Torp averaging 43. Done a little better than that so far today. Oklahoma State moving around, threatening a rush. They won't get it. Ooh. Big, high, spiraling kick. That'll be taken after the 10, 15, and driven back to the 15-yard line. What a punt. And it's Lawrence Vickers who moves in on the hit. A 59-yard kick and a six-yard return. It's lead at 7 to nothing. They have the football for a first down and 10. Ball spotted at the 16 yard line Woods rolling looking into the flats it'll be completed up to the 20 22 yard line as they go against the grain Majama over there hauled it in the senior and uh, Henderson put the hit on there's been a couple of pretty good running backs at Oklahoma State let's not forget Tatum Bell last year who now playing for the Denver Broncos right down the street but you look at the history of this great program with the running backs and Lawrence, he's right up in there. Barry Sanders, uh, to me, saw him play for years and years in the NFL, the best running back to ever play the game at both levels. But let's not forget for a while there, he sat behind Thurman Thomas, his second string. Seymour Shaw is back in the backfield. That's Shaw on the carry, 25, first down. He'll be shy of the 30-yard line. Taken down by Thaddeus Washington, the sophomore, a five-yard gain, and uh, picks up the first and ten. Seymour, not even listed on the depth charts, coming off the bench here in the first half and carrying the football a little bit when Morency is not in there. And Morency, like Purify, is spending a lot of time on the sideline. And, and Morency, we got that report from the field that he's got a little bit of a hamstring. And when you start to get tired towards the end of the half or the end of the game, sometimes you have to go over and let it rest because that's when you can injure it even more. Shaw's again in the backfield on a first down and 10 for the Cowboys, and he'll carry, but not very far. Maybe a two-yard gain. Brian E. will move in and put the hit on. Time now for the Aflac trivia question this week. Here it is. The four players to be inducted into the Pro and College Football Hall of Fame in the same year. Four players. Both the College and Pro Football Hall of Fame Sam Year. That's our Aplac trivia question. <laughs> I have a pretty good clue. Well, Three. you saw the answer yesterday. Well, what do you well, mean no, you a clue? Not for me, for the guys watching. Oh, uh, and the girls watching. Okay. Three runners, one defensive lineman. It's a good clue. That'll give you a chance. That's good. Least. Second down and eight. Shaw continues in the backfield. Morency is not in there, has not been in on this series. 
gets hands off to him. Gets away from a couple of tacklers and will move it up to about the 35 yard line, a three yard gain. Don moved in to put the hit on. And let's check in again with Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc. As we mentioned at the top of the show that Bernan Morency had been uh, favoring a hamstring. It's had it for most of his career here, but on Tuesday of this week, he tweaked that hamstring in practice. It is on the right side, and uh, he would not burst, as the coach calls, when he got in the open field. He comes back in the game now, and they're going to be very, very careful. He's a very muscular guy, and they want to make sure it's basically stretched out between series. He came off for some stretching, and is back in the ball game. Third and five, 45 percent conversion on third down this season for the Cowboys. They're one for three today. Morency indeed is in the backfield third and five morency has got the carry and he's not going to get it. He'll be shy a yard Thaddeus Washington again moving in from that linebacker position to put the hit on Morency a four yard gain and Jordan dies on the fantastic true freshman out of Hawaii who hyper extended his knee not getting much playing time and Thaddeus Washington taking advantage of it almost like Vickers taking advantage of purifies injury. Washington who had that great blitz early earlier and made the tackle for a loss that time a really nice hit where it looked like Morrissey had a seam and was going to pick up the first down interesting developments in this game both teams their leading runners two of the best in the nation are finding limited playing time because of injuries so the two offenses are having to adjust and try to redefine it fourth down and one they've got split ends here but no they're going to kick it away. Bo Farden does back to the 11 yard line and carried by Robinson oh, don't not go very far he went no. backwards yeah, you got go driven there he yes. took it there so that's where it will be spotted Greg Jones they hit 51 yard kick a two yard return sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan everything we touch we shift and everything we shift we try to make better. Affleck, ask about it at work. And ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. Look at that beautiful flowing water out of the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado. 74 degree day. Winds light, gentle out of the east, about five miles an hour. Humidity 30%. That's called A1. It is a first down and 10. Colorado flat on the handoff. And not a lot of room there for Danny Daniel Jolly. The short yardage man, he'll be sent back for about a one yard loss on that play. And really, the first kind of true just running downhill running play for Colorado on first down. They were not very creative last week against Missouri, the game we had a few weeks ago against Washington State. It got to a point where it's like, coaches, come on, you've got to open it up. And yesterday, Gary. Barnett was adamant when we met with him in his office that yes guys we will open up stuff to do it occasionally to keep OSU honest but they have opened it up quite a bit on first down Vickers is in the backfield on a second down and 11 wide receivers each way he turns again rolling he's going to get sacked got to get rid of it it'll be incomplete and he just got rid of that he threw it from the goal line Jerry Don Bray on him let's take a look at our Nissan drive summary well it has not been pretty for Gary Barnett's Buffaloes they had the missed field goal early 52 yarder by Mason Crosby just pushing a little bit left and then the one that they went for on fourth and one was downs but I really think you have to credit Bill Clay's defense you saw right there Colorado loves to move the pocket Joel Clad, who was an infielder in baseball throws very well on the run and right now these young defensive ends for Bill Clay are not being fooled they're getting upfield and Joel just has to throw it away he did a nice job of not taking a sack there. third down and 11 they are 0 for 5 and third down conversions for the Buffalo so far the quick drop flat near side it'll be incomplete out of bounds where the ball was caught Platt got leveled by Vernon Grant the strong safety was on the blitz that time and took him down well, fourth and 11. well right now you have to say that the chess match between the offensive coordinator from Colorado and the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma State has is being won soundly by Bill Clay and his staff for Oklahoma State that time again they're in that 3 3 5 look because of third and long Grant looks like he's covering he comes late he's not accounted for but Clyde has to throw it long before he wants to on third and long going to be kicking now from the end zone or right along the end line John Torp has put the ball up well so far today on this fourth down gets that one off Prentice Elliott look at this kick Prentice Elliott's going to be taken down back of the 25 yard line what a kick.
kick and what coverage by you Charles a 58 yard punt right now the kicking game matters our athletic trivia question can you name the four indicted inducted into the pro college football hall of fames on the same year who are the four it's a pretty good group that guy Gail Sayers was OK Dorset was actually pronounced Dorset kind of like Theismann was Theismann and then there's your defensive tackle Randy White I would say probably the best defensive player ever to play the game and the, the tip off was we are doing an Oklahoma State game there had there to be go. somebody there's always some relation yeah that was hey, just this summer yeah first down to 10 848 to go in the half Morrency is now back in the backfield Morrency on the carry look out if he turns that corner he'll be right at the first down marker up to about the 37 yard line Lorenzo Sims takes him out of bounds almost a 10 yard gain we'll see on the spot. OK let me ask you something Gary does this look like a guy who has a bad hamstring. No I mean he looks faster than anybody else on the field. The way you judge a running back is by strength balance and speed is not flat out. What's his hundred meter time. It's acceleration to the hole when the hole opens. He I, I don't see it. I mean I know they may be concerned maybe maybe it's in his head. That he thinks he's going to hurt himself, but right now at 12.1 yards per carry, I would say you would want that number 33 in the ball game a lot. Only Cedric Benson and Ryan Motes from Louisiana Tech were better yards per game coming into this weekend in college football than Morrency and Morrency straight ahead, and that'll be taken down maybe if after a three-yard gain. Manapuna again put the hit on. Let's check in with Dr. Jerry Potch. Doc. Guys, hard to, hard to imagine, and Morrency is less than 100% when you watch him run here, but uh, I think he is probably physically fine. I think Ed Cunningham hit the nail on the head when they talk about the fact that he is uh, mentally maybe concerned about the hamstring a little bit, and some of the doctors said, you know, he came from minor league baseball. Maybe those guys aren't as tough as what we uh, oh, see in college. Oh, <laughs> so, get away. So I'm just repeating get what the guys said. Get out of here. Breaking, breaking news, Dr. Jerry Punch is saying that baseball players aren't as tough as Where's football Roger players. Roger Clement? I hope the Rocket heard that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> a second down and a seven with eight minutes to go here in the first half. Morrency in the backfield gets away from one tackler. What a play. But uh, he'll be stopped after a one yard gain. Dawn, Agariga Dawn, second on the team in total tackles, moving in for Colorado. But what an amazing job by Morrency as he is taking the handoff to avoid the blitzer at his feet and I would he pick up about half a yard a yard instead of a four yard loss now the linebackers got it he, he can't go for the kill shot there but that was a really nice job by Morrency to make this a makeable first down and another third down third down and five to go here are the Cowboys ball spotted at their own 42 yard line they will work out of the shotgun and Woods doesn't like what he sees and is going to have to use another timeout. And they've got one left here in the half. We'll be back third down and five when we return. Gary Barnett is pacing the sidelines an enormously important game. They lost their only conference game so far. Oklahoma State won there so Oklahoma State's got the lead. A third down and five two tight ends they slot it and they're still in trouble. As to what they're doing here, they call the timeout. Woods got an option going here. Doesn't pitch back. Well, he's he gets got taken it. down well shy of a first down. Brian Ewo after a three-yard gain. Well, there's that's a speed option to the left, and this is something with a guy like Woods you can do because of his speed and size. But he's got to pitch this ball. But watch as he gets to the outside. The receivers do a great job getting up in the corners in the safety. That that. that Morrissey might still be running if he pitches that. You cannot be afraid to pitch it in the speed option. Farden's done the kicking today. Three punts averaging almost 56 yards. His long one, 63 today. He will kick this one from the 34-yard line. Another high kick. Robinson back. Robinson run into by his own That was hit. That was that hit. was hit. And Oklahoma State down in the football at the 10-yard line. Wow. Hugh Charles. The young running back, true freshman. Yeah, that's a big mistake. Robinson, when he calls for the fair catch, needs to be making whatever the call is. A lot of teams yell, Peter, 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 whatever. It's a little loud down there on the field, but Hugh Charles continues to block his man, runs into the man who's trying to catch it. It hits their feet. Oh. That is a huge, huge mistake. Jeremy Nathan comes up with the football. They're talking it over here just to make sure the ball was actually touched. 
but not much question about it when you look at it on the replay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A receiver and subsequently recovered by Oklahoma State. Therefore, Oklahoma State's ball first and ten. Wow. You know, you know, Gary Barnett made an interesting point to us yesterday about all these young players he's having to play on special teams and everything else. Hugh Charles, a true freshman, is these guys are just trying to survive. They don't really listen yet. They're just trying to make it through class, get to practice on time, and that is something that's a little nuance of the kicking game. When you are blocking the speed guy on the outside, you have to occasionally peek back and see what your return is doing. If you see a fair catch, just pull off that block. That's a little wrinkle that a true freshman won't get. Oklahoma State, 11th fumble recovery, tied for the most, and they convert. They convert it. 21 out of 23 in the red zone so far this year, including 17 touchdowns. Lawrence is in. First and 10. Ball at the 11-yard line. Flags are down. Colorado, do not make this mistake. You've already, it's its a quick change. You just left the field, think you're going to get it back. You're a little tired. Don't give Oklahoma State a break on first and 10 from the 10 and a half. Prior to the snap, offside on the defense with contact, five yards, remains first down. Begins to come on rabble now. This is where the this young Colorado football mm -hmm. team's got to bend over and buy the bootstraps get this back together and that's what Gary Barnett is trying to do on the sideline that's the player that ran into exactly. his own man and forced the fumble and that, that is, he's doing exactly what he was talking about you know these young guys they're just trying to survive they've got school they've got so many things on their mind he's got to get them to listen and learn those little nuances first and ten from the five they can get a first down inside the one Lawrence is in the backfield with his big fullback in front of him and that's where they go Lawrence <laughs> touchdown about 37 with Sean Willis the 260 pound uh, granite block a six yard TD you can feel that block up here this guy boy is he going to be make a great throw so another turnover another touchdown oh. and uh, Morrissey has got them both I mean he is going up against a defensive end in James Gary who's six almost seven 270 pounds and he just hits him right in his mouth. You know, Sam Mays says we like to hit people in the mouth. That's hitting a guy in the mouth right there. Jason Ricks for the extra point. He puts it up, and that kick is good. So the turnover is once again converted. The turnovers Oklahoma State has picked up this season. They have converted 15 turnovers total. Six of them they've taken in for touchdowns, and they've got a 14 to nothing lead. Gary Barnett trying to figure out what to do here. Colorado down 14 nothing. They cannot get their offense going. The big fumble converted into a touchdown by Oklahoma State. There's got to be some adjustments for Colorado. They got to get back into it here. And the kick will again be deep into the end zone. And uh, that's as far as that'll go. We'll move out to the 20 and start at first and 10 Colorado. There is only one new show that begins with two Emmy winning lawyers. Emmy winners James Spader and William Shatner star in the all new Boston Legal Sunday at 10 Eastern 9 Central ABC. I didn't know they give Emmys to lawyers. They don't. Give them a silver tongue, don't they? <laughs> some of them. Some of them they just give a tongue. Yeah. I'm an attorney. So I, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, 6 12 left to go here in the first half. Morin sees 10 carries, 96 yards, and two touchdowns today, and it has, hasn't even played most of the game. No, and a first down per carry is pretty good average. Bobby Purify is back in the ball game. Colorado will try and get it going. Flat, looking, short drop, yeah. incomplete, and there again is the problem. Passes not held on to a clock, and Steen can't hang on to that. Duck. Guys, Les Miles played and coached under Bo Schimbeck, so it wouldn't be surprising to anyone that he has somewhat of a throwback offense and defense here. Very, very physical offense, but it's also a throwback during the week. They practice physically two days every week and even scrimmage during bowl weeks, and they've had minimal injuries. A lot of teams backing off on contact. Les is ramping it up, and it seems to be working. You know where else they're ramping it up? Is it Oklahoma? Bob yeah. Stoops and his staff, they, when they're in full pads, they tackle to the ground. And I asked him one time, Coach, both of these guys, are you afraid of injuries? He said, Ed, we're more afraid of missed tackles than we are of a couple of Bobby Purify on the carry. He'll bring that up to about a four-yard gain. Ball spotted at about the 24-yard line. Michigan was the site. This, is, this was then. And, and like Kirk Ferentz at Iowa, Philip Fulmer at Tennessee, when a guy 
was born and bred an offensive lineman, his ego is going to show up on his football team. And they have been recruiting towards this type of offense. Last year, of course, with Josh Fields, they threw it a little more than they probably wanted to, but they had a pretty good receiver. Bobby Purify goes to the sideline, third down and six. Lawrence Vickers in the backfield. Wide receivers both ways. That'll be completed and uh, taken for a first down up to the 36 yard line. That'll be an 11 yard gain on that one as Blake Mackey found some room on the near side. Coming up at halftime, the Valvoline halftime show. It'll be John Craig and Aaron along bringing you the highlights and analysis from Showdown Saturday's biggest games and a look at the Red River shootout. Well, Colorado's offense has been it's been a roller coaster. They've been really inconsistent. Last week against Missouri, not good. The Washington State game, not very good. A good half against Colorado State, not a good second half. They love the flat passes. That's completed 40. And uh, out of bounds up to the 41. Dusty Sprague, over the last two weeks, has come off the bench to be a primary receiver. He gains five on that one. And right now, what I think Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator for Colorado, is doing is giving some easy throws to Joel Klatt. They have to get into, into a rhythm talking earlier about him being kind of hot and cold hot and cold the best way to get a guy going is give him a couple of easy throws like that maybe a screen that picks up five ten yards get something rolling for your quarterback because without him they can't win this ball game junior quarterback couple of tight ends in they'll bring one back in motion this way it is a second down and five straight up the middle Vickers on the carry very close to a first down think he got it. John Holland free safety moves in to put the hit on Vickers gains five on the play we'll check the spot to see whether or not they got the first down it's very close yes they did when you kind of get the feeling Gary this drive they need to get something yeah hey, even if it's just three they need to get something going for a couple of different reasons none that that defense needs to stay on the sideline for a little bit they're starting to get worn out after having to go back on the field with the muffed punt but they need something out of this drive Vickers seven carries 31 yards first down and a 10 from the 46 yard line the fake great coverage and that'll be thrown for a loss on the completed pass nowhere to run on that one good defensive coverage let's check it again with Doug. guys the Colorado playbook is six inches thick and in three of the four games this year they used about an inch and a half of that playbook and didn't move the ball very well against North Texas they were told yesterday they used two and a half inches of the playbook and scored 52 points now Sean Watson told me today we're throwing the book and we're going to use all six inches if we can if we're opening up so thus far they've tried to be able to move the ball with some of those short quick passes. but the hard part doc and you know this they, they don't have any experienced receivers and so even though Joel Klatt is a master of all six inches doesn't matter if those guys outside don't second know second and doing. ten he's in the pocket got a man open Vickers over midfield out of the backfield and he will get into Cowboy territory Taken down by Daniel McNamara and uh, Vickers. A 19 yard gain. Clatt got leveled as linemen go back to make sure he's okay. But Vickers, the coaches told us Vickers must get involved as a receiver if we're going to have an offense. And Joel Clatt takes a big shot. Remember last year, he struggled with the same injury on his non throwing shoulder, the AC joint separation, as Bobby Purify has. He just gets sandwiched. Yeah, he's going to be okay. Probably just got the wind knocked out of him. This is a tough, tough guy. He fought through that injury all last year. Looks like he might have got something done on his left hand. It'll be a first and 10. Klatt's 11 for 22 with 128 yards so far. Fakes again, looking deep near side. They try the flats instead. Vickers, and he'll be taken out of bounds. Maybe a five yard gain. Jamar Ransom out of El Paso, Texas, moving over to put the hit on. Ransom coming off the bench to play defense. And this is the strength of that 4 2 5. That's, you've got to think why Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator, has stayed in this quasi unconventional defense, the 4 2 5. Most people going back to the 4 3 and almost playing 4 4 4s. But because of all these safeties they have, they're the key to this defense. The two rovers, the two, basically, you have two strong safeties that have to invert and come down. Ransom, very good open field tackle. Second down at five. Bobby Purify not in there. Vickers here. Vickers on the carry, a little room. Come on, move ahead of me. He's up to the 20. He was pushing his blocker. He gets a 12 yard gain. Terrence Barrow was the man in yep, front of him. Get out of the way, man. Little let me go here. So Vickers is playing himself a heck of a game. Delighted to have you with us here in Boulder, Colorado with Ed Cunningham and Dr. Jerry Punch. I'm Gary Thorne, the number 21 Cowboys 
taking a 14 nothing lead their leading ground gainer Morency has had two touchdowns a long one and a short one on the ground both of these teams offensively hampered Bobby Purify injured for Colorado not getting a lot of playing time Morency apparently injured as well but he's out there scoring TDs and we'll be right back 14 to nothing Jolly again uh, comes on to play in the backfield no Bobby Purify two receivers they bring the tight end in motion flat in the pocket down the middle open inside the five yard line incomplete it was dropped another dropped football Jesse Wallace over the middle well that ball thrown right on the money I, you know we've talked a little bit about Joel Klatt early in the game his accuracy is off it looks like in this drive he's starting to get a little hot streak this is a nice ball to Jesse Wallace and he's got to make that play he's got to keep his feet you know a lot of guys they see that ball coming and they stop running if he runs through this ball keeps his feet he waltzes into the end zone and makes an easy catch. It's almost like he thought about it too much. Those are the big plays at the yes. decided football game. No, they have to have that. You get that, and uh, you're on the board, and it's new. Well, they still plenty of time here, and they got a second down and ten. They are at the Cowboys' twenty. They've moved it downfield. Nowhere to run near side though, and that's going to go for a loss. Daniel Jolly, their short yardage man, will lose a yard as Effie. Mowaren moved in and put the initial hit on. Well, and as we look at this replay, we've seen earlier in the game and earlier in this drive that zone stretch play where the white shirts were getting pushed back. This time, Mowaren and all his line mates get great pressure into the backfield. And that, to me, on second and 10, if you, incomplete pass, you got to go back to the throw. Do something again where you move it. This is just a little too conservative, I think, on second and 10. Another big third down. They are one for seven. Third down conversions. Flat. With a third down and 11. Again, the drop back into the pocket has time. Couldn't find a receiver. He's got room. 15 new. Got tripped up shy of the 10 yard line. We got to kick it here. An eight yard gain. Uh, the flat fell hard. With a minute 32 to go, and the clock continues to run. It is going to bring up a fourth down and about three. I, I think you have to kick it here, Gary. I, th I, I think that you have to get something on the board. They're going to use their timeout to think about it. Colorado will use for the first time a timeout, and Gary Barnett will make the decision. What do we do here? Fourth and two. Flat on the sideline, got up a little slow after that last carry. Yeah, he got his left hand hit on a couple of plays ago, and that time as he was finishing, Victor DeGreat, the linebacker, landed on him. He rolled kind of funny, but I, I, there's just no question. I mean, your, your quarterback's a little shaken up right now. You have to get points out of this drive. You have to have something positive. And then you go on defense. Oklahoma State only has one timeout left. Their passing game is really non existent. So you're in good position to at least cut this to 11. Colorado's done about everything here but score. Their total yards, 207. To Oklahoma State's 140. Time of possession, 17 minutes to 11 minutes plus seconds. But they cannot finish it off here. They've picked up first downs 10 to 5 over Oklahoma State. But Oklahoma State's got the 14 to nothing lead. There we go, fourth down and two. If you're Oklahoma State, you better stay on sides because if wow, I'm reading go. this right, they're just going to try to get them to jump off sides and then maybe use another timeout. Fourth down and two, Platt. They send the man in motion. Nope, they're going for the first down. Bobby Purify back in there. I don't think he got. He didn't get it. Wow, Oklahoma I, I, I State. I don't like that decision. Holds tough. And, and, and besides that, it's he's not a healthy player. No. And you're going to run an inside running play with a guy who's already favoring his left shoulder. If anything, put Vickers in there. He's done well on the stretch zone. But I think you, if you don't get points out of this, that, that's a big blow psychologically to your team at the end of the half. Now, no official sign yet on the turnover. They're still looking, but I don't think no, they got it. No, I don't it. think he got it. This is a great finish of the tackle. Purify runs. Uh, I mean, he does everything he can, but those safeties come in and finish. They will bring the chain gang nah, out to take it. a look here, but he was nah, it he certainly looked it. like he was a yard shy. Yeah, he had to get almost all the way to the 10 yard line. Purifies had only five carries in this game for 22 yards, and they brought him in on that short yardage, and he misses it by a yard. And the Oklahoma State defense a reason to celebrate as they will get the football. Wow. 13th play of that drive. Well, nothing out of it. And, and you know, I. I was first guessing on that so I can go back and talk about it. I, I just to me uh, I thought you should have kicked it take the points 
And then on top of that, I just don't think it was a very good, if you are going to go for it, a guy who's obviously not even close to himself in Bobby Purify with a left shoulder injury. A very tough run doesn't make it. With a minute 20 left to go, you'd think, along with what you're saying, Ed, you'd want for Colorado to win feeling a positive. Yes. Instead, unless something happens here, it's a it's a downer. Yep. First down and ten, a minute 20 left to go on the half. Cowboys with a 14 to nothing lead in the football. Woods handoff straight up the middle, and uh, that'll be brought up to about uh, four yard gain to about the 14 yard line. The Colorado offense, as we noted, all of the numbers. If you just look at the numbers, go in their favor. Platt's been rolling out. Bobenstein, the intended, incomplete. Gets one that would have been inside the five. Incomplete. Purified trying to carry first down. Shy by a yard. Yeah, they had the missed field goal early by Mason Crosby, so they decided to go for it on that drop to throw behind Poffenstein. And then that time, just the questionable, questionable call that I thought they probably should have put the points on the board. Timeout taken. Uh, Colorado wants to try and uh, get a football back here if they can. Morrency right now is up to 100 yards gained, 11 carries. That means he is now for the seventh consecutive regular season game reached the 100 yard mark rushing yeah, and you had the Cotton Bowl into that against Ole Miss he's at eight in a row and if he gets over 200 that would be four of his last eight games over 200 yards this guy and you know he was behind Tatum Bell last year and Tatum Bell was having a great year hurt his ankle late in the season and against a little bit of lower competition Kansas and Baylor he had a couple of big games he had a nice game against Mississippi and the coaches have said he is a pleasant surprise we didn't know yeah. because you know, we didn't quite see the competition last year at the end of the season that he's going to see especially coming up I mean the Oklahoma State's got some really big ball games coming up in the Big 12 South and this is a 25 to 30 carry back he was a backup last year that's why they weren't sure what they'd get he came into the game averaging 176 Cedric Benson of Texas averaging 186 Ryan Motes of Louisiana Tech 185 and then third in the nation more and see who you're watching here today a second down and six 111 left to go in the half Cowboys do not want to give the football up here in Colorado they're going to claim first move and we'll see who the officials think move first Manapuna the man who went across the line for Colorado a little chess game going on out there right now to just try and run this clock out while Colorado wants to get a football back well and, and now you have a huge another huge mental mistake I mean you would love Offside. to get the ball back number 93 of the defense and it's always Five worth yards. making the other team putt Colorado had two block punts against Washington State and down. now with an offense that's obviously going to be limited. They're not going to let Woods, the quarterback, throw it. So you know they're going to run it. And Manapuna gets them right up to where they can pick up a first down and run out the clock and go happily in 14 to nothing. That's the fifth penalty Colorado has picked up here. And it'll make it a second down and one. The ball spotted uh, just shy of the 20-yard line. The first down here, as that says, make it pretty easy for the Cowboys to be able to get out of this first half for that 14 nothing lead. And they will go straight up the middle and a first down and a whole lot more. The big fullback, Sean Willis. He takes about five guys and then he carries them an extra five yards. He is a giant of a guy. He is something else. I mean, Tyrone Henderson, all 5'10, 180 pounds of him. I mean, he does everything he can. He finally is a part of the tackle, so Henderson does his job. But how many yards was that 13. after first contact? I mean, there was probably five or six after first contact. A first down and 10. Cowboys with it with under a minute left to go here in the first half. Morrency loves to turn that corner, comes back inside, and he'll get it up to about the 42-yard line before he's taken down, a nine-yard gain. Morrency touches the football, and it's five <laughs> it's, or six yards. Guaranteed. It's 10. Wow. You know, and, and Doc, you know, we were having some fun with Doc talking about the baseball in him. The, I, hamstring injury? I mean, come on. You know, in Colorado, they're, they're struggling defensively. Their total yards given up, they're 100th in the country coming into this ball game. Much better in, against the scoring. They're 37th in the country, but they have given up big chunks of yards against a, a few running backs this year. So. It's not the best competition he's going to see in the Big 12, but boy, does he look good. Second down and one. They're going to try for the Hail Mary. They'll throw this one deep as the clock winds down, and it is wow. caught. Touchdown! What a reception made by Prentice Elliott. A 58-yard 
touchdown pass as the half expires. An excellent, excellent, aggressive call by Les Miles and Mike Gundy, his offensive coordinator, all predicated on the fact that they got the first down and it allowed them to milk the clock knowing they could go out end of the half. This is great. Prentice Elliott, a young man that they have been talking about. His ability makes a great play. Pretty good coverage by Lorenzo Sims, but he reaches behind him to make the catch. That's spectacular. And that is a obviously an enormous touchdown. The extra point kick is up by Jason Ricks. It is good. The first half is over. It expired as Elliott caught that going into the end zone. A 21 nothing lead for the Cowboys. Valvoline halftime show is next. John Saunders, Greg James, Aaron Taylor. That's coming up right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. the half with a four play 89 yard drive that took a minute 20 and as the half ended they had another touchdown with Ed Cunningham I'm Gary Thorne Colorado chances not converted I, I think that Colorado should have kicked that field goal we talked about that at length and then Vaca Manapuno jumps off sides and what a great call by Les Miles and his staff uh, you're, you're on the road 14 nothing it's probably gonna be the last play of the half that really took the wind out of the sails now for Colorado if you if your quarterback Joe Clack can't do it you don't have a chance in the second half so that's what they got to find right here and Colorado defense is going to have to rise to the occasion because it'll be Oklahoma State getting the uh, football to start the second half with the Cowboys leading at 21 to nothing the Cowboys are four and zero oh coming into this game and they're trying to go five and zero oh if they can pick up this victory here their second conference game in the Big 12 and we are ready to go here in the second half. And the kick will be well back into the end zone. And in fact, I want to kick here. First and 20. <laughs> I want, like I want a second here, career. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. First half numbers are Pacific Life game summary. Well, they don't ask Donovan Woods to do a lot. They will as this young man gets a little better with his accuracy and his timing. But the one thing that Mike Hankwitz, a defense coordinator, said from the University of Colorado, we all know what Morrissey can do. I mean, we saw it. He ran for almost 10 yards per carry. But he harped all week long that Oklahoma State has a very good group of wide receivers. The one guy, Prentice Elliott, only had four receptions coming into today's game. What a spectacular catch he made to end the half on that long touchdown. Magic number is 58 right now. Morrency has had a 58-yard run. Elliott, a 58-yard pass reception, both for TDs. Cowboys from the 21st down and to 10. Morrency on the carry. He will bounce up for a five yard gain just over the 25. And now, Doc, what does Colorado do? Yeah, let's talk to head coach Gary Barnett at halftime. He said, you know, off defensively, we played pretty well. We made some mental mistakes in the first half. He said, but you know, I take full responsibility. He said, I made two aggressive calls that put us in the hole. And now we're going to have to go out there and battle back in the second half. Well, obviously, he's talking about the, I thought the fourth and one where he threw it a little behind uh, Kloffenstein. I thought that was the right thing. I think going for it down here where they needed something on the board was a little too aggressive. Second down at five, Donovan Woods, their quarterback. And a handoff. Marcy again on the carry. That'll be shy of the first down as he picks up four. So Marcy continues his running game as he's running ahead of this big offensive line, in, uh, including Mays up front. Yeah, it's a big man. He opens up some holes, doesn't he? Well, you know, and, and a lot of guys are going to yell, scream, you know, scream, hold, hold, hold. But as long as that right hand stays inside the frame of Matt McChesney, that will never be called. Got Corey Curtis, a junior tackle, down on the field for the Cowboys here as we're just underway here in the second half. And uh, let's see what's going on on the other sideline, Doc. Guys, halftime in the Cowboy locker room of Oklahoma State. Les Miles told his troops, he said, guys, we're going to come out here in the second half. We cannot turn the ball over. We need to deny the run. We need to sting them and stop the run. That is their character, their personality to run the football. If they cannot run the football, then, uh, then we've got it. We're going to be able to go 5-0 and and prove to the country that we belong as a power on the national scene. Well, they look like uh, they've got a pretty good shot at that with a 21-0 lead right now. Yeah, that's a great shot. <laughs> Look at this. This is a third down and one. They put Mays in the backfield, and I don't think oh, they got no, the first I don't think down. They did either. Sam Mays is their right guard. He went back into the backfield along with Sean Willis. There's Mays. Yeah, well, and they went, they didn't go towards him. I mean, if you're going to put him at the wing guard position, which is what that looked like, 
Why wouldn't you go that way? Adik. They didn't get him. Shy by a yard. Yep. So it'll be a fourth down and one. Colorado has blocked three punts this yes, season. Sir. Got one in the end zone for TD. They could use something like that right now. They're going to need something. They're going to need some kind of momentum to get it going here in the second half. Cole Farden has done a great job punting for the Cowboys. Stefan Robinson is back. The kick will come from about the 15 yard line. Pretty good rush. Very high kick. It'll be taken right there at the 20 yard line. Got touched and he never gave a safe call. So he wanted to carry it even though he got hit immediately. A 50 yard punt and a seven yard return. Robinson on the carry. Colorado will get it in a first down and 10. Well, you know what you're going to get when you play Oklahoma State. You're going to get Morris. But the thing that is really tough to deal with is how physical this offensive line is. And they have a 265 pound fullback. And their receivers, although they don't throw it a lot, coming into today's game, only 47 pass attempts in four games. But that one at the end of the half, just a brilliant call by Mike Gundy and Les Miles to go ahead and take a shot as Vernon Grant's down with an injury. But just a brilliant call and a young man and Prentice Elliott that they really think is going to be a special wide receiver for them. An enormous play to end the half scoring that touchdown to make it 21 to nothing and it came after the decisions as you heard Doc talk about with Gary Barnett that I made a couple of big decisions that backfired on us. He didn't go for the field goal. They, they weren't able to get that. They weren't able to get the first down turn the ball over then had the penalty gave the ball back and the Cowboys were able to get enough yardage to convert it on the Hail Mary after the clock had gone to zeros for the touchdown. So uh, that took care of that. Homecoming heroes on hand here and Doc is with him. Doc? No doubt about it. A homecoming hero here, John Hessler. And John, it's great to have you back in Boulder. What a great effort to get back here. Yeah, I'm just excited to be here. This is awesome. Great seats. This is awesome. Football helped you get back. I mean, I know you were battled for your life in, in a coma for a month and a little over a month, and it was football that helped bring you back. And after the play, we'll come back and tell the folks at home exactly what happened to help you get back to where you are today. Garrett? John is here for the homecoming ceremonies and was in the big homecoming parade yesterday. A first down at 10. Colorado on the attack. That'll be taken up over the 30-yard line by James Co uh, Joel Clatt, rather. Uh, there is... Clad, who's been in there at quarterback, Cox has now come in and taken his place. 6'3, 215 pound sophomore in for Joel Clad out of Simi Valley, California. And you can see has not had much playing time this year. And I think this is an injury thing. I don't think this is a benching of Joel Clad. Joel took a shot on that left hand and then on that run down. In the red zone, when they decided to go for it, he came up gimpy. I don't think that he's healthy. So Cox is in there at quarterback. Purify continues to get limited playing time. Cox looking. They got to throw the football complete up near midfield. It'll be taken down inside the 45. Blake Mackey on the carry and picks up the first down. Doug? Back with John Hessler. And John, when you were in the hospital, the high school where you were coaching, they brought one over to your bedside and read it to you every night to help you get back. The playbook. <laughs> they read you the playbook and they read the plays individually. When you started coming out of the coma and becoming more aware, you were shouting out offensive play. That's right. So football, the effects of football extending far beyond the playing field. It's great to have you back and congratulations on being the Grand Marshal here yeah, for homecoming. Great, thank you. And we wish all the best to John. Great story. 26 yard gain. First down and 10. Colorado's going to get one in the end zone. Cox again to the right. A lot of time. Sees a little roll. Shy of the first down. No, he's got it. Wow. Cox comes on and runs it for the first down. He picked up 12 before taken out by Jamie Thompson. Well, we've seen a couple of guys in this ball game take advantage when one of their teammates goes down with an injury. I, I really think, and we'll get Dr. Punch over there when he, after visiting with John Hessler, he'll get over to the sideline and find out if it is, in fact, an injury of Joel Clad. But Cox, a guy who, a quarterback cheering on another quarterback, and he knows what it's like to take over for an injury. Of course, he took over for Coy Detmer and had a great season. First down and 10. Cox had appeared in only one game prior to this and had gone two for two in passing. This time up to the near side. Oof. Not much running room right there for Lawrence Vickers. A couple of yards. Vickers has been their leading ground man in this game. Ten carries, 48 yards. With Bobby Purify having carried the ball only five times for 22 yards. 
And we're getting a lot of players going down for the Cowboys here. That's Daniel McLemore. And of course, Oklahoma State already short Darren Williams. One of the best cover guys in America, and a guy who's a scoring threat. He has five interception returns for a touchdown in his career in NCAA record. And McLemore, a guy who was playing into the field. He's one of the shorter corners. And Bill Clay usually plays right or left with his corners. But McLemore, who just a shade over 5'7", has been playing to the field. Take, take a look at the bottom of the screen. If you can see number four come flying into the pile. A little bit of holding going on there, but yeah, yeah, just got that neck pulled back a little bit. You got to be so careful when you're leading with the head. Boy, Vickers led with his head on after he went down yeah, too. He did didn't head it? first into the ground on that one. Macklemore out, but uh, up and standing. Vickers continues to have to pick up the ground game. Normally, that goes to Bobby Purify because of the shoulder injuries. Not playing today. There are the numbers for Vickers, both ends of it, passing and receiving. Cox in at the quarterback position. This is going to be a second down and eight. They send the man in motion, Monte to the right. They're looking for him. They go to the tight end. A Vickers rather out of the backfield. A 15. Vickers the 10. Vickers the touchdown. And a flag is down. Yeah, they're going to get Ron Monte for holding. What a shame. And it did from you know from this angle up here, and obviously the officials on it, it looked like Monte was just finishing that block. We'll have to see if he actually did hold. Colorado can't get a break today. No, they sure can. This is another big penalty. Of the penalties that they have taken today, three of them have been momentum breaking penalties. Vickers went in. Holy touchdown, no the offense. Number four, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. First down, spot of the foul. Keep an eye here. Number four is Monte. Well, let's talk about the good of the play. This is a great job by Cox. He's got a defensive end, a little jump throw, and even better catch by Vickers. But watch as number four, Monte, comes into the picture right there. Yeah, he is holding. Uh, you know, it looked like he was just finishing the block, but he's working one-on-one -on -one with Andrew Alexander, and that is the proper call. Definitely holding. Well, Colorado still got good position here. Sure. They've got a first down and 10. Yeah. Just underway here in the second half, so they got time. Bobby Purify is back in the game, the lone setback. With Cox at quarterback taking over for Clad here to start the half. Bobby Purify going up the middle, and uh, he'll get a gain of about four on that. John Holland put the hit on. Let's get an update on Clad from Doug. Guys, Joel Clatt took a lick in the side of the helmet in that last series before the first half and got up and was complaining of some stiffness in his neck. Now, went in at halftime in the locker room, and apparently the neck has stiffened up. He has some spasm in the base of his neck. That's why he's not in the game right now. They're loosening him up. They believe that he would be able to come back in if needed, but right now, that neck very, very tight. Not going to take any chances. He's out of the game. Steve Wover, the trainer, will let him know when they're going to let him get back in. But right now, some stiffness at the base of the neck. 12 for 24, 133 yards. Underneath the towel is Joel Klatt. Bobby Purify, six yards, uh, six times, 26 carries. Cox looking near side at the 10. Completed, but that's going to be that, a two-yard gain. Good catch by Evan Judge, but he had nowhere to go. While our gang's in Dallas, we've got Sam in New York. Sam Ryan. Hey, Gary, and showed on Saturday, we take you out to the Pac-10 now, early second half. Here's Matt Leiner to check out this pass. Right down the middle to Dwayne Jarrett in the end zone, 16 yards. USC now leads it 23 to 10, early third. We'll send it back to you, Gary. You say Heisman Trophy. <laughs> well, is it him or Reggie Bush is the problem? They both can say it very well. <laughs> yes, they can. Colorado down here, 21 nothing, trying to get on the board. Vickers has come back in as the running back. This is a third down and four. Big third down play. This is where Colorado's not been able to get it done. Cox, quick drop, looks the other way, what and intercepted at the five. A beautiful read on that, on a pass play to the middle, Paul Duren. Their leading tackler, the linebacker, comes up with the interception. Remember, this guy was a safety and quarterback in high school. So he's a better space athlete than you would expect from a middle linebacker. He lays out in front of the receiver. And Cox, this is something a young quarterback, he has not played very much. You cannot lock onto a receiver. Watch number 10's eyes. They come right back. It takes him a while. He actually looked off a little bit. Let's give more credit to Duran. I thought that Cox locked in a little bit too much. He looks, comes back. That's actually a nice job. Sorry, I didn't mean to rip you there, Cox. Good job. 
But that's just Paul Duran making a great play. Duran outstanding. He is so quick. He uh, creates the turnover. It'll be a first and ten Cowboys in Colorado again. They get in the red zone and they cannot convert it. First down and ten with 8.50 left to go in the third. Donovan Woods shouting at everybody with the clock ticking down. Just trying to gain some running room. Lawrence, he bounces off everybody. Flags are down. Yeah, they, they delayed. They were trying to blow those whistles. Interesting here, the uh, people working the clock and the crews here at the field, they had lightning strike one of the scoreboards. So the game, so the clock, the play clock, only works at the end that the team is driving to. They have to keep switching it back and forth in order to get that done because of a lightning bolt. So one of the clocks is working? Well, they both work, but only one at a time. So thankfully, lightning doesn't strike twice. There you go. Thank you so much. I, I, Thank that you. was way too much of a setup. Thank you, Lou Christie. 25-second <laughs> clock never started. Therefore, we will replay the down. No well, this is what we were talking about. The play right. clock never started. Yeah. They didn't get the switch done fast enough. So there is no penalty. It's just that the play clock never got going. The officials know they've had to deal with that here today and if they don't get one unplugged and the other one plugged in in time that's what can happen. Colorado's defense needs to and, and you know they've, they've been asked to do a lot today. They've really the two big plays and that's been kind of the story this year for Colorado. They've played fairly well at times on defense but they have just been thrown over the top and run over the top once or two or once or twice a half and that's what's happened so far but they need to come up and make a stop. So the play clock is working here. So again we are a first down and ten from the five yard line. Warren C and that's going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. He's on moved in and put the hit on. Good play defensively Colorado trying to get this ball back deep. Time permitting stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. It'll feature scores and highlights from across the country on this Saturday of football in Oklahoma's domination of Texas. You know, that, that first half of that game it looked like Texas may be able to pull it out and, and Oklahoma was kind of doing what Colorado's doing they were getting inside the 15 yard line and having to come away with field goal tries but that Adrian Peterson's a pretty special young player loss of a yard it'll bring up a second down and 11 with the ball at the four yard line now be careful of the Cowboys airing one out Woods on the handoff five Lawrence gets tackled and I mean every one of the defensive backs reading on him he still gets a five yard gain for Lawrence. This Colorado team has had trouble. They've allowed 500 yards rushing in the past two games. And they are facing this Oklahoma team that grinds it out to about 250 yards a game. They're up to about 160 yards so far in this game on the ground with Morency leading the charge. Well, and they may overtake Texas. Texas struggled today running the ball against Oklahoma. They may overtake them as the best running team. Right now, I think, though, with Donovan Woods, move the pocket, give him a run pass option on this third and medium. One for five, third down conversions. It is a third down and five here. Time clicking on that play clock down to two. One, they get it off. A flat pass, dangerous one at the 10. Trying to get a one on one. Will not get the first down, three yard gain. Luke Frazier on the reception. Dominique Brooks on the hit. Brooks does a really nice job of making this tackle, and it's worth mentioning another injury that Colorado's dealing with is J.J. Billingsley. He had arthroscopic surgery during training camp, played against Colorado State, had some swelling, didn't play much sideline against Washington on State. The Colorado sideline. What? It's a sideline warning. There's no penalty. No penalty, but the next time there will be. I don't know how you can have a sideline warning here because there is no sideline. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The narrowest sidelines yeah. I've ever seen here at Colorado, the stands virtually come right down to the field. There's just enough room for the players, and they've got to stay on the other side of that gray area, or they get the warning and then a penalty if they're if they're out towards the field. I hate when you have to pay attention to the gray area. Disgusting, isn't it? A fourth down and two ball will be kicked from the goal line. Cole Farden, Joe, oh, he that's, got rushed, yeah, he got hit, flag down. is down, that's and another one. big penalty will go against boy, oh Colorado. Boy. boy, oh boy, they just, you know, this young team for Gary Barnett, and we talked about it a little bit in the first half yesterday, we were talking, he said, you know, these young kids, nah, he's, he's claiming he got tipped, I did not hear the, t -t -t. you can kind of hear the double. Rushing the kick on the kickers, Terrence Wheatley that time, Wheatley will be called. Well, they're calling the five yard. It doesn't matter. It's a first down either way because it's under five yards for the first. But this sure looked like roughing to me. I guess that's running into. That's a correct call. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Seven penalties, 50 yards total. More importantly, though, they've been key penalties. Oh, and you know, it's funny because Terrence Wheatley had actually taken a really good angle, and his own man 
Is that Hugh Charles again ran into him and Hugh Charles was the young man who made the mistake on the punt when he was blocking he got hit by the ball in Oklahoma State got it on the 10 yard line Charles has had a tough day yeah. running into his own people yes uh, for Colorado and that'll silence the house so a chance for good field position for the Buffalo at least for the moment will go for naught. it'll be a first down and 10 the Cowboys will keep it and all they can do over there is discuss what happened and try and make sure it doesn't happen again. You can have all the young guys with all the ability in the world, but until they learn how to play in space, body control, body presence, especially on special teams, you're going to have huge mistakes. Donovan Woods on the handoff. Morency. Morency will bring it up over the 25-yard line for an 8-yard gain. Tackle made by Dominique Brooks. And now Morency is, is staying in the game more than he did in the first half, so he must be feeling all right. I, I would imagine that Les Miles sat him down and said, you know, Vernon, uh, I'm watching you run. That hamstring looks okay to me. It might be 99.8%, but you're not coming out of this ball game. He, he just, it's amazing how quickly he changes direction and gets back up field. It is a second down and a two. As they keep the two tight ends in on this one, and that's gonna be a first down, be about the 29-yard line. Warren say again, on the carry, 83% of their offensive plays come via the run. And when Morency is feeling good, as he appears to be right now, he will just take the football and carry the team on his back. As this season goes on, and let's not forget where Oklahoma State resides in the Big 12. They're in the Southern Division. If they were in the Northern Division, I would say without a doubt this is the favorite to win the North Division. But with OU and Texas and Texas A&M playing, a hundred miles beyond where they were last year they're at some point going to have to develop an efficient passing game they're not going to have to be great at it but if they truly want to contend for the Big 12 with the chance to go play for the championship they've got to do more of this they're trying air woods downfield intercepted no it's incomplete almost held on to by Lorenzo Sims Spider-Man who has one interception in the game couldn't hang on to that woods toss a faulty web <laughs> <laughs> but they're gonna Donovan Woods uh, you know he's one of those guys he's got plenty of arm when you study him on film he has a tendency to drive the ball into the ground sometimes that's how you hold the ball but guys with lively arms especially on hitches and things they'll throw it a lot at the feet he's thrown it a couple times fairly well and I think that's the wrinkle in the offense they're going to need is moving him giving him run pass options again it doesn't have to be great they just have to be efficient now in throwing the ball second down and 10 as you saw it's five for eight 82 yards and there goes the flag again they've had their problems and that time in the offensive line we had some movement prior to the snap false start number 86 of the offense five Match yards him up. Still second down. It'll be a second down. They pick up the penalty. Only their third penalty of the game. Right now, they're just trying to time possess here. They've got the 21-0 oh, yeah. lead, and they, they want to hang on to the football. Colorado's yeah. actually had the better of it. 21 and a half minutes to 18 in the ball game possession. Yeah, you know, it, it's a shame that Les Miles' offense isn't built for eating the clock. <laughs> yeah. Right down they, they, the may, they may have it for the next 20 minutes, the way Vernon morrency has been running it. It'll be a second down and 15 now. Couple of receivers up to the near side. They work out of the shotgun. And again, the key. That's the second time in the game on long yardage. We've seen him go to the shotgun, and that'll be just a two yard gain for Donovan Woods. That has not fooled Colorado. You know, you, you, when you have a guy like Donovan Woods, and that's kind of the new wrinkle. You see Alex Smith at Utah do it. You, you see all these athletic quarterbacks now where when they're in the shotgun, they're essentially an eye back. And that guy standing next to them becomes a fullback. You, you keep it in because it makes the defense stay honest. But I wouldn't run it more than three or four times a game because right now it's not really as good as handing it off to number 33. One for seven on third down conversions. This is a third and 13 for the Cowboys at their own 24 yard line. The fake up the middle of passes wide open at midfield down to the 40 and a first down. And Bajama makes up for the penalty he picked up in this series with a 38 yard reception. I don't know that I've ever seen a young quarterback who throws much more accurate deep balls this is a post to his tight end and you just can't throw the ball any better than that he had to wait till he cleared the linebacker he put it right on the money 
where he struggles sometimes is on the little hitches and slants. And so it's almost like he's working in reverse. Donovan Woods, he, he's able to, he threw a couple of great deep balls early in the game. It's like he's working reverse, has to start working more back towards the line of scrimmage. He is six for nine in the passing department, 120 yards gained. Bantam has had two of the receptions in the game. It'll be a first down at 10, but Oklahoma needs the timeout here. We will be back. The Cowboys are leading the Buffaloes 21 to nothing. The college football is brought to you by Cadillac and the all-new STS. Breakthrough. Pacific Life, offering insurance, annuities, and investments. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And day after tomorrow, own the biggest event in 10,000 years on DVD Tuesday. Magnificent weekend here in Boulder, Colorado. Fall colors, lots of sun, mid-70s, blue skies. But it's the Cowboys have the home lead. team. Yeah. On this homecoming, not a good one so far for Colorado. Barnsey on the carry on a first down and 10. He will take that ball uh, down to about the 33. Dominique Brooks has made a lot of tackles recently. Again, moved in and put the hit on. Now, this is where if you're Les Miles and you have a young quarterback in Donovan Woods, this is a coaching process. You do this all the time in practice, but this is a great place for Donovan Woods to learn how to control the length of a game. You're up 21 points. You have a fantastic running back who has not been slowed down one time today. Tell everybody in the huddle when you get near the sidelines, you go down, you don't go out of bounds, and you run the play clock under five seconds every time before you snap it. Second down and six here. With the ball at the 33. And they're just going to run it. RNC, uh, Sean Willis, rather, this time on the carry, the big junior fullback going ahead and gains four. Want to remind you, next Saturday, ABC's College Football features a terrific Big 12 doubleheader. Kickoff game one at noon Eastern, followed by game two at 3.30. Check your local listings for the games in your area. And this team, a uh, chance to go 5-0 and oh right now for State. With 3.26 left to go. It would be 2-0 and oh in conference play if they could hang on to this lead. And, and you know, people who want to write off Oklahoma State in the South race of the Big 12, let's look at a little bit of history. First of all, Texas gave up a ton of yards today to Oklahoma running the ball. I think Oklahoma State's running game is right up there with Oklahoma's, although Oklahoma's offensive line, I think, probably the best in the country. And let's not forget that they beat Oklahoma two of the last three years. So there's... Some things that could shake out in the Big 12 South that it's not just going to be a two team race. A lot to be determined here. Oklahoma State with victories over UCLA, Tulsa, SMU, and then last week, 36 7 over Iowa State in their victory. Chain gang coming out here, and that's going to be shy by about a yard and we're going to check in and see what's going on elsewhere with Sam Ryan. Sam. All righty Gary now it's time for my pick for the Pontiac game changing performance of the day Minnesota at Michigan late in the fourth two minutes to go the freshman quarterback Chad Henney to Tyler Ecker 31 yards Michigan wins this one late 27 24 to vote log on to ESPN.com slash Pontiac. Pretty good football game right there. Nice comeback. Chad Henney's really growing into a that's a true freshman too. There's no red shirt in front of that. This will be a third down and one for the Cowboys. Colorado trying to get the football back, but they're not going to do it here. If there's a yard to be gained and Sean <laughs> Willis is in your backfield, you can pretty much call it a gimme. All he's got to do is lean forward. He'll take 11 guys with him on the lead. Four-yard gain for Willis, and it is a first down. And they've been pounding on that right side over big Sam Mays. We met with him yesterday. We had him in our little tiny studio. He barely fit in there. Good feet comes off on the linebacker, throwing guys all over the place. Really nice hook block. You know what I like about him? And, and, and I told you yesterday, the first thing I check when I shake an offensive lineman's hand, does it feel like a catcher's mitt? Well, he has two catcher's mitts on both <laughs> hands because he gets those hands inside and he is not letting go. As long as they're inside, they're not going to call holding. May is an All-American candidate, and they've had trouble with this, and the flag goes down. All day long, we have seen Donovan Woods backing up. Delay a game, the offense, five yards, still first down. Delay a game, Woods has had to turn around, talk to his ends, talk to his backfield, and run out of time or call a timeout. Well, you, you're going to have some growing pains. I mean, you know, we just saw another freshman, Chad Henney of Michigan. I'm sure there's some things that they'd like to do offensively that they can't. Although, of course, Donovan, a redshirt freshman, sat last year, their brother, Dewan, and 
wide receiver and Rashawn who's now of course with the 49ers. The Woods have been very very good to Oklahoma State. Very good. All right. They get the play from the sideline. It'll be a first down uh, and 15 now. They've had 11 plays 67 yards and they've eaten up six minutes 18 seconds in this series. Lawrence look at that oh deep. Lawrence trying to get to the 20 yard line and he will. Wow, an eight yard gain and a lot of effort to get it. Oh, he is something. I, I'd hate to see him with a healthy hamstring. Boy, he just freezes you. And, 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 you know, there are a lot of guys who can shake you, but what amazes me is how quickly he accelerates. Tat, 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 sorry. You're just, and the angle is now gone. You know, the defender's doing the right thing. You got to kind of sit and catch the guy. But he accelerates so fast after his little bat bat with those feet that your angle's dead. Lawrence, 146 yards in 20 carries. There's the drive. And they've got a second down and eight now after that penalty. Two receivers near side. Again, he drops back. Donovan Woods, the long call, the clock ticking, gets it off, looking to the ends where he's got him. Floats one end zone, and a touchdown! Luke Frazier on the reception. 20 yard TD pass. Donovan Woods to Luke Frazier. Well, that's easy. that looked easy because this was not exactly a beautiful ball thrown by Donovan Woods. He, he tends to, I don't know if the ball slips out of his hands or what, but the, the ball tends to float sometimes when he's trying to drive it. Look how much that ball floats, but Frazier, that's a, that's a blown coverage. And right at the end of the play there, Dominique Brooks threw his mouthpiece in disgust, expecting the corner to come over and help. He had to, of course, a strong safety has to honor the run. Brooks very frustrated that he's not getting the help he thinks he needs. The extra point up and good. The play of the series, 13 plays, 95 yards, two touchdown passes for Woods. Took seven minutes, 18 seconds. 28-0 lead, two touchdown passes thrown in this game by Donovan Woods. One to Prentiss Elliott, who's had just two TDs caught, and Fraser gets his first touchdown pass. He only had two receptions coming into the game. Prentiss Elliott only had four. So they've stayed away from Dewan Woods, who's been covered, and found some other receivers who have gotten the job done today for the Cowboys. And they are on top with a minute 33 left to go here in the third. 28-0 over in Colorado. Martin on the kick and just say goodbye in the light air here at Boulder. It goes way beyond the back line. If there's two things you want to do in the state of Colorado in sports, kicker or punter, what we'll call those one, or home run hitter. Don't throw a curveball. <laughs> Don't hang one. Don't throw no. a curveball because it will hang <laughs> here in this light air. This ball really carries and now Cox comes back out. James Cox at quarterback Joel Klatt taken out after he went down at the end of the first half and he has not come back in here in the second half. Lawrence Vickers continues in the backfield. Bobby purifies only had six carries for 26 yards. Colorado's leading rusher who is hurt both shoulders bothering him. At the 20 yard line that will be complete but it'll only good for a couple of yards. Poppenstein over on the carry and Holland on the hit. Tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern ESPN, two teams, high expectations. Ray Lewis, the Ravens. They don't have to go far to meet Joe Gibbs and the Redskins. It is a crosstown showdown. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Crosstown, Baltimore to Washington. Well, it's a couple of beltways away. <laughs> 95. 95. Made that drive many a times. Grew up in D.C. Used to go watch the Orioles. There you go. Second down and nine, under a minute left to go here in the third. Cox back, big rush, throws it from the 10 to get rid of it. Almost, inter <laughs> almost intercepted down on the field, actually, in the interception. The big rush put on that time by Pinson. And the near interception was a defensive back who'd fallen and almost came up with it. Well, and as the season goes on, it's obvious that they're going to want. Right now, James Cox is playing because Joel Klatt has a stiff neck, but. Cox a better runner than Joel Klatt and Joel's not a statue by any stretch of the imagination but this guy was a track guy at Royal High School in Simi Valley California He actually ran a 23 4 200 meters so he has pretty legitimate speed for a quarterback and it's a third down and nine for Colorado Cox three receivers 
We are looking on the long yardage play. Drop Cox over the middle. Vickers 25, and that's as far as he'll go, and he'll be well shy of the first down. Vernon Grant the hit, a four-yard gain, and the crowd here at homecoming, uh, some boos and some little ugly oohs and ahs going up. Colorado's homecoming game where they're down 28 to nothing. Well, offensively, Colorado has just really struggled. Not just this game, but last week against Missouri. Against Washington State, they won the game with 125 yards of total offense thanks to three scores when they weren't on the field. Torp on to do the kicking. No rush put on at all. Big, booming kick. Back uh, and taken at the 17-yard line and hang on to your laces on that one. Good tackle put on by Charles Sherman, a, a rather use. You Charles in on the hit, 57-yard punt, no return. Good coverage. And it'll be a first down and 10. Well, it's going to be regroup time for Colorado. We've completed three quarters here, and it has been the Cowboys game. College football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship TV. You're watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. Well, for Colorado, now it's things you want to avoid like this. Last time shot out at home, 86, Oklahoma, 28 nothing. Well, Crosby can kick a 75-yard field goal, so you might need to line him up at some point. This is where you say liars, figures, <laughs> figures, <laughs> yeah. liars. Yeah. You look at the stats, if you hadn't watched the game, and you'd say, well, they must be in the game or leading Colorado. They're not, not even close. Uh, it was all those missed opportunities, the two fourth and shorts that they missed in the red zone. And Gary Barnett admitted to Dr. Punch that probably a little too aggressive on those decisions. Cowboys get the football back as we go to the fourth. It'll be a first down and a 10. Right now, Oklahoma State is outscoring the opponents this year 192 to 55. In this, the fifth game they have played, Gary Barnett's team being shut out here at home 28 to nothing. Things change quite a bit, though, for Oklahoma State. Their next four games Texas A&M at Missouri, Oklahoma at Texas. Just shaking his head over there because everything he's tried, including gambling a couple of times has not worked for him in this game. Donovan Woods at quarterback Oklahoma State. One running back Marcy on the spin and he'll get a couple out of nothing that time on the hit by Dawn who had 28 tackles coming in total tackles second on the team. Gariga Don on that uh, gain of one. And you know the hard part for Gary Barnett I bet we could put together four or five things that his team did mentally that made it 28 nothing. I'm not sure. I, I, I think Oklahoma State's a really good team. I, I think defensively they present you some problems with the way they line up. They've got some athletes. I'm not sure, sure that they're not just the better team than Colorado, mm -hmm. but this game is not 28 nothing without those four or five min mental mistakes. Jumping off sides at the wrong time, the punt that got kicked and, and recovered on the 10 yard line. Yep. Shaw's in the backfield. Morrissey out. Shaw on the carry. And he will uh, rumble ahead uh, to about the 28 yard line. One minute into the fourth quarter, Oklahoma State trying to go 5 0 to start the year, and now it's possession of the football here in the fourth. Shaw. Shaw's had a pretty good game coming off the bench and getting some uh, key carries, as Warren C has had an opportunity to rest a little bit while he's been in. He's had five carries, 16 yards, not big yardage, but. Yeah, I carried for a couple. I wish the coaches would have told us we were going to see more Shaw. Yeah, he uh, was not listed anywhere. Third down and four here. Colorado trying to stop it and get field position. And uh, they will do that as the ball is taken up to the 26, a two yard gain that time. There's the man we're talking about. Seymour Shaw, not listed on the depth charts of the running back position, but getting his chances here today. Morency came out after one carry on that series. Well, I think that Colorado's probably tired of seeing Morency. So Seymour Shaw was a welcome sight to them, number two instead of number 33. Farden will be back. Robinson to receive. Farden doing the kicking. Colorado will get the football back. It'll come uh, when he sets toe to ball at about the 16 yard line. High kick down near the 
36 yard line Robinson 40 and there he will be taken down. So the Buffalo get it back in uh, 43 yard punt seven yard return and we'll check in with Doug. Guys, a big offensive wall that Oklahoma State and Morrency and company run behind is coached by Chuck Moeller. Now, he's done a ph phenomenal job as an offensive line coach, but prior to coming to Stillwater, he was at Stanford, California, where he led the Cardinal to the 2000 Rose Bowl. His offensive line that year allowed a total of 15 sacks and 1,700 yards rushing. He said the key to being an offensive line coach, it's all about being physical, being unselfish. But the number one thing for an offensive line, Ed Cunningham, he said, is chemistry. You all got to get along. Well, it, it looks like that uh, Coach Moeller and his offensive line spent some time at the buffet together, getting to know each other. <laughs> More time That's in the important. weight room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's Vickers on the carry. Hurdles one potential tackler and gets it up to about the 48 yard line. Good game for Vickers. And, and I say that half joking, you know, and, and when people see me, they say, well, you look like an ex accountant, not an ex offensive lineman. I don't know that I could, the best offensive line coaches I ever had were all big men. And I, I think and most of them obviously had played the position and were just bigger men to begin with. But I think there's some camaraderie that comes with, you know what, we're not the best looking guys in the world, so we kind of have to bond a little bit. Almost intercepted, knocked down at the 40. And that was Jamie Thompson, who's played a very strong game. Thompson had seven tackles against Iowa State and has had a couple of sacks coming into this game. And Thompson's been involved in knocking passes down as Cox trying for the first down in the year did not get it. There's the man, Jamie Thompson, a junior, 190 pounder. Well, and it's these safeties, and they have a plethora of safeties. Remember, they run the 4-2-5, so there are three safeties, and they have a rotation of six guys that consistently go in there and keep each other fresh. But not, don't forget that Darren Williams, probably the best corner in the Big 12, is at home with a broken forearm, and this secondary is still playing great. Third down at five. Cox, uh, that'll be a first down. Made sure he got it that time. Evan Judge, the junior on the reception for an eight-yard gain. Colorado will move the chains first and ten as they move into Cowboy territory. Well, you always try to make lemonade out of lemons, and if you, the Colorado coaches, looks like you've got yourself a backup quarterback in James Cox. Getting his chance here with Clatt coming out. Cox has played here in the second half. Clatt has not made an appearance. He has a very lively arm. When he decides to get it there, it gets there in a hurry, and we've already seen He's got good speed and athleticism if the pocket breaks down. Only playing in his second game of the season, a first down and 10. Cox, three receivers set, looking to the short side, back into the middle, and that will be caught oh, out. Oh, what a shot. oh, man. Tyler Littlehales, a sophomore, I think the first chance he's had, and Cox does the same thing Klatz had to do is shake your head and go, how can you not? Yeah, have that's held a touchdown. To yeah, that's a, that's a walk in touchdown. A really, really nice throw by James Cox. This ball put right in stride for Little Hales, and he just doesn't finish it. And as he was bobbling, it took his high, took his eye off to see if he was about to get hit in the mouth, and that's why he dropped it. Need to catch it the first time, though. Cox is now six for 10, 65 yards and an interception. Platt went 12 for 24 and 133 yards. Second down and 10. Ball at the 44-yard line. Cox again. A little takeout. That is caught and held on to. And a first down. Robert Jones, the hit. But Judge Evan Judge held on to that one. Boy, this James Cox, this guy looks, and I know it's garbage time, and, and you cannot think that Oklahoma State is playing their base aggressive defense. They're not. The corners are playing off a little bit. The only way they'd lose is a couple of turnovers and some deep balls. But throwing the ball on time, not perfectly accurate yet, but he doesn't get to work with these first string receivers a lot. Brings up a first down and a 10. And that's Vickers on the spin on the carry. And uh, he'll move it up down inside the 30 yard line, three yard gain. McGee moved in to put the hit on. Busy day for Vickers. Cox checking the playlist on his sleeve. Uh, he should be seven for 11 with a touchdown because that ball to Little Hales was a walk in. Hurry up offense, second down and six. Two receivers left side. That's where he's looking over the middle again. That'll be caught very close to another first down. Robinstein, the tight end, who had a couple of touchdowns coming into this game. Again, McGee moves in to put the hit on. And this is a really nice job by James Cox. Just stuff you don't expect to see from a guy who hasn't been playing much since high school. A little bit of pressure. 
you're going to the tight end. You can fall away from the pressure. If it's a short throw to a tight end, you don't have to kill it to get it to the guy. And that time, felt the pressure, and as he's falling back, just flicked it right to him. Nice play. They do get the first down. They're trying to avoid the shutout here at home. They've got 10-plus uh, to go here in the fourth. Cox again, deep drop, looking over the middle. Gets it away, completed. Mackey takes it, and down to the five-yard line. Well, Cox is playing like he's been there before. 15-yard gain on the reception. And Blake Mackey, we were talking earlier in the game, he had that huge catch on the first drive. A guy with a tremendous amount of ability. And this is a nice job. Look at him step up into the pocket and finishing the play. That's just really nice job. Deepest penetration that they've had in this game. It'll bring up a first down and goal ball at the six-yard line. Vickers, the carry, and he's in for the touchdown. Six-yard TD run. Now, Thomas Wright still down the free safety because Vickers laid the wood to him right as he got to the goal line. Let's hope that Thomas Wright is okay. This is a big man, 6'2", 240 pounds. Bobby Purify with the injured shoulder, and listen to this shot right at the goal line. Oh. Yeah, it's a knockout shot and that's that's driven with the football let's hope that Thomas Wright is okay they'll have to wait on the extra point here until he's able to get up touchdown on the board great to see uh, Thomas Wright leaving the field here let's get down to Doc who's close to him as it comes off that is uh, Terry Noonan the head trainer with him and uh, Dr. Ken Smith the family practice physician and team doctor they wanted to be very careful they were following a specific protocol as he was on the field they wanted to make sure he could move all his extremities had great feeling doing a, an essentially a neurologic examination before they tipped to move him at all he will head to the sideline and we'll update you momentarily Mason Crosby had a weight extra point kick is up and that is good so a drive nine plays 57 yards they get the TD Vickers gets his first rushing TD of the year it's 28-7. Presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Singular wireless. And Miller. There's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Want to go skiing? Early snow. The Rocky Mountain Jess, that's the real thing. That's a live shot. They're hoping for a very early ski season. A couple of areas that open early on the Continental Divide are already talking about getting to it. Gorgeous day here, about 75 degrees in Boulder, but that's what you see from the stadium. Crosby on the kick. And that drops in at about the three, and it's going to be handled there by Jones. Robert Jones of the Cowboys muscles his way up to about the 17-yard line. Cowboys get it back. Our Chrysler passing playbook. Well, and this was set up, remember, by the penalty on Colorado going off sides, and this allowed Les Miles and his staff to take a shot, a little play action. And the young secondary from Colorado, of course, you have to honor the run against Oklahoma State, thinking that Oklahoma State is going to run out the clock. I love the aggressive call. Prentiss Elliott, a young man with a lot of ability, true freshman. And Donovan Woods, a guy that he's, I don't know that he's ever going to be a classic drop back passer. But because of the running game that Ohio, Oklahoma State has established, I think they're going to start to be able to take more advantage of plays like that down the field. They've stayed true to form. On the season, they run the ball 83% of the time, 78% today. And they want to run it right now. A first down and a 10. Aren't you making the turn? And gets Stay in bounds. Gets out of bounds, I think. He got tripped up right on the shoelaces. Gets a two-yard gain. He had nowhere to go with that. I can't tell you how many times that the offensive lineman I played with would yell at him right now. What are you doing? They're thinking about a sandwich <laughs> at about this point. So you're right back to the <laughs> offensive lineman and eating again. Yeah, okay. Hey, listen, when you weigh 330 pounds, there's very few things you think about other than eating. <laughs> a second down and eight. Cowboys with a football and with a 28 to 7 lead in this game. Morrency, 22 carries, 150 yards, two TDs, number 33 in the backfield. Up over the 20, 30, and another tackle at the shoelaces, and Morrency's just eating them up. Let's check in down on the field with Doc. 
Guys, sophomore safety Thomas Wright was unconscious on the field after that heavy impact a moment ago uh, in the end zone. That's why the deliberate examination. Now, he's on the sidelines, but the good news is he's awake and alert and should be fine. That uh, that momentary uh, loss of consciousness, uh, neurologically intact, they're probably done for the day, not back in the ballgame here this afternoon. Doc, is that one of the deals where they start asking him the simple questions like, where are you, day of the week and stuff? Just well, it's mostly it's neurological examination now, motor skills and sensory, but now they're talking to him. He understands where he is, but uh, probably a mild, very, very mild concern. Good news. First down and 10 here. Big rush Colorado and everybody moving. And we'll get the flag down. We want to remind you that if we have time, we will take you to the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. Scores and highlights from all across the country today and big games being played conference wise. That's coming up. Time for a minute. Part of the snap. Ball start. Number 76. Five yards. Still first down. You know, it's hard when you lean one way with 330 plus pounds. When you start leaning, <laughs> it's a lot of inertia. Sam Mays, he's one of my new heroes. What Yesterday a great we guy. had a chance to talk with him. What yeah. a great guy. He's got a great smile, great attitude, five year player, and uh, looks forward to going into playing on Sundays in the National Football League. He's an All American candidate and very intelligent, articulate, and a yes. uh, great sense of humor. But not out there in the offensive line. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Don't get in front yeah, of him. He likes to maul him. First down and uh, 15. Ball spotted at the 25 yard line. Just one receiver. You want to carry the football and control it. And he got Lawrence. Why not? Flag goes down on the play again after he maybe gained a couple, two or three yards. You know, Gary, it's a, it's amazing when you start seeing these young men. They're not kids. I mean, 22. Offside. 23. Number 60 of the defense. Five yards. Still first down. My last year of college football was 91. My last year in the NFL was 96. And it it is amazing to me in that time frame how much bigger. I mean, we had plenty of 300, 310 pounders, but these guys, 330, 340. I mean, I remember Mike Williams at Texas, who's now with the Buffalo Bills. He walked into one of our meetings, and I said, Mike, you've got to weigh 380 pounds, and he wouldn't tell me. But it just it looks like they're born that way. It, you know, they're not they're not using any drugs to get that big. It's just like. That's the way they came out of mom, and that's just how big they were put on this earth. God bless mom for that. Yeah. If you're uh, the line offensive line coach at Oklahoma State, first down and 10, straight up the middle over the 40-yard line and up to about the 45, Sean Willis, almost as big as the lineman at 260, <laughs> a 13-yard gain for the big fullback, who usually blocks, and now for They're him, throwing him a bone. Yeah. Oh, they're absolutely throwing him a bone. Give him a chance to carry the football there, because he doesn't get many. And Mike, Mike Gundy told a great story about him. He's from Flatonia, Texas, a tiny little town in Texas, very late bloomer, played a very low level of Texas high school football and when he first got to Division 1A he wasn't quite sure if he wanted to play this type of football and they said last spring he, he had a really good end of last season but they said this spring they just saw a, a powerful man the light went on and he loves playing this game now. first and 10 Lawrence he is six yards back in that backfield on the carry Willis by the way has carried five times himself for 39 yards but normally it's Lawrence behind Willis in the rushing game. Well and, and it's been a long day for Sean Willis and I think it's nice of Mike Gunny to finally because of all this hard work start letting him carry the ball a little bit. But he, he can run a trap play this time he comes across the formation and actually traps a defensive end. But he gets low to the ground, and I just love how he snaps and finishes the block. That actually a pretty good job by Jordan Dyes on the freshman taking him on. But we said at the beginning, it's that stick and stay. Even if you don't blow him up, just maintain contact, and a guy like Morrissey can run right by it. Morrissey trying to go wide on this one, and he'll be taken down uh, with about a one-yard gain on that one. And Sam Mays, when we met with him yesterday, we were asking him about this fullback of his and what he thought of him. Sean Willis, if I was a linebacker, I'd be terrified. The man is unbelievable. I've never seen a guy that that size run so fast. You know, I watched him bench 500 pounds this summer. He's just a, a specimen. You know, people aren't built like this every day, and, and I'm definitely happy he's on my side of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were talking about. He's great. Well, those two tackling, and they were ever to meet up on the other side of the ball. Would that be some collision? Oh, my gosh. Well, they've got another guy. You know, we were talking to Bill Clay, their defensive coordinator. they got a young man that's playing as a true freshman, Walter Thomas. 6'5", 340 pounds. He came in at 370 pounds. And, you know, they're worried about his technique and everything. He says, you know, he doesn't have sound technique now. 
but it's also not sound to run into a brick wall over and over again. So Les Miles and his staff, they're doing a really nice job recruiting. They're getting some Oklahoma kids to stay. They're going down into Texas. Got a couple Florida kids to come up there. Sort of stockpile some big, strong men. Their program on the fly right now, they've won 19 of their last 24 football games. They've been to the bowl the last two years to a bowl game. They've got a third down and seven here. Looking for that flat pass, just lob it out near side. 40, 30, down inside the 20, maybe all the way for the touchdown. The one Woods TD. Well, if you don't, three yards. if you don't know who the Woods brothers are, you got a problem because nobody from Colorado went out there. Everybody in the Big 12 remembers their older brother Rashawn, first-round pick out of for the 49ers but Deshaun goes over to the left of younger brother Donovan and no one walks over there it looked like this was not a called play Donovan saw it and Rashawn's going to give his brother a big hug after this one he said yeah if they don't come out and cover me just toss it my way I'll score with it third TD pass today the extra point kick is up by Jason Ricks that is good and the Cowboys are romping they lead Colorado 35-7 today 53 yards there's a summary of the drive they had a 58 yard Morrency touchdown run they had a 58 yard pass Donovan Woods to Prentice Elliott and now a 53 yard touchdown pass the Colorado's given up big plays in this game that one again heading uh, back into the end zone Barden on the kick and there is where it will be brought out to the 20. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game song. Well right at the top of the show we established a couple of different things one that we have one of the best runners in America in this ball game, Vernon Morenci, and he has done nothing to disprove that. This guy is something claims he has a bad hamstring. I saw none of it. But Lawrence Vickers, you know, you have to find some bright spots if you're Colorado. For me, that's a huge bright spot. The coaches know that this guy has next level ability. Bobby Purify out with the shoulder injury, tried to gut it out and play a little bit, but Vickers really stood up and played well at a 64 yards rushing. Vickers. 13 carries for the 64 yards. Bobby Purify's hardly been in here in the second. Cox in at quarterback. Vickers on the reception. And he'll get the first down before he's driven out of bounds as he takes it up to about the 33-yard line. So Vickers has done it both ways today, Ed, both as a receiver and as a rusher. Yeah, and that's what Gary Barnett and Sean Watson, his offensive coordinator, were telling us yesterday when we sat down with him that, you know, this, this offense is much better when they get the fullback and the tight end involved in the passing game. So that was obviously coming in. But I just go back, Gary, to the youth in, in really key positions, especially in the secondary. I mean, to leave DeWan Woods uncovered, that's nothing but experience and, ex and knowing what a formation is. A bunch of sophomores back there in the secondary didn't see it. Cox back again into the pocket, throwing deep, completed. Into Cowboy territory, out of bounds at about the 43. Blake Mackey. It's been a nice day. He's been a primary receiver, a 25-yard game. And he is the fastest wide receiver. Let's not forget that of the five top receivers that Colorado lost off of last year's team, one of them because the NCAA decided Jeremy Bloom could not play, which was rather ridiculous in my opinion. But Bloom was a sub-4-4 guy, and they missed that vertical stretch. Well, Mackey's got that speed. But the coaches have just been waiting for him to figure it out. It looks like he's making pretty good strides today. Five receptions, 119 yards for him. First down and 10, Colorado into Cowboy territory again. Ball spotted at the 42. Quick drop pass, 30 and uh, out of bounds. It'll be another first down. Evan Judge on the reception. Let's check in with Doc. Guys, talking about the young Buffaloes. Last year, Colorado had a sophomore lead the team in rushing and passing. And this year, thus far in four games entering today, they've had 25 players see the field for the very first time in a Colorado uniform, including eight true freshmen. So that, as you said, they are a very, very young football team. 25 is, is an astronomical number, especially at this level in the Big 12. And, you know, I, again, I go back to what Gary said, that the young guys are just trying to survive with school and everything else. They're just not getting better. Cox looking to the end zone. Didn't have anybody who carried himself. Little running room. Gets a block in front and goes down at about the 21-yard line. As James Cox carries for eight yards on a first and ten situation. They've tried to throw the ball in first downs. They have changed that up from what they did in the first four games both with Joel Klatt and then with James Cox and a quarterback and I'm not one to sit here and say that Joel Klatt should be not be the starting quarterback but 
it looks to me like this young man has earned some playing time. And Joel Klatt, you can't put all the blame on him. They've got young receivers and not the best protection all the time, but this guy looks really good. A little safety pass near side. Vickers, but he's not going anywhere. And he'll lose yardage on that. Vernon Grant, the junior. Strong safety moved up and put the hit on Vickers for a loss of a couple of yards. And it's unfortunate, you know, when an offense is struggling, a lot of times everybody directs the blame right at the quarterback. And, and it's so hard if you don't know everything that's going on misreads by the receivers things like that it's hard to really make a judgment but this guy brings a little different element he's got a very lively arm and boy is he good in space Cox back into that pocket another pass that should have been caught that's incomplete Gatorons. Evan Judge to me the biggest play in this football game was the one that came in the first half when it was 14 to nothing and a ball was dropped inside the five yard line that should have been completed and would have been a touchdown they have it's not just that there's been one ball drops in this game there have been a half a dozen catches uh, that just should have been made that weren't yep. and that has cost them seven total unofficially that we have today by the receivers of Colorado and that hurts and that is an right. ongoing problem and, and that's why I don't want to put you know the, the struggles of this offense all on Joel Clapp all, all I'm saying is I think Cox like Lawrence Vickers like some of these other guys who have taken over for people with injuries they're starting to show in live game situations hey coach I deserve at least a shot to play he's 13 out of 18 for 149 yards one interception Cox the man at quarterback called the timeout fourth down and two when we come back that's the way he looks and that's the way he feels Joe Platt yeah, he's got a stiff neck he took a couple of hard shots at the end of the second half and the entire or the end of the first half the entire second half has been James Cox and here on fourth and two let's see what this young man from Simi Valley California can do fourth down and two they've gone 0 for two on fourth down plays today here's a lob Hail Mary end zone and Touchdown! This kid, nice pass this kid needs Dusty to play Sprague on the reception and they're on the board a 21 yard TD pass well and he just showed me one more little wrinkle for a young quarterback he saw a blitz knew he was going to get hammered knew it could not get picked up because they had too many receivers in the route and waited and waited and waited to the last minute and throw in through an absolutely picture perfect ball. James Cox has earned him some self, himself some playing time this afternoon. Nice little Hail Mary lob and a spray gets his first career touchdown pass and that'll make it 35 13 extra point attempt is up and that is good so it's 35 14. You know, there was a great article uh, a couple weeks ago in Sporting News Magazine about tough quarterbacks. And, of course, Brett Favre was mentioned. And I've always said this. Your quarterback has to be the toughest guy on your football team. He's going to take more shots that he doesn't see coming than anybody else on the field. He's got to be a little bit mean. He's got to be able to yell at guys when they need to be yelled at. And he's got to be able to not complain if things aren't getting done right just because they're not going right. And this young man, he's showing me a little something. A little moxie. They both get first in their career on the passing end of it and on the reception end. That uh, series, seven plays, 80 yards, took only a minute 40 for first fourth down conversion that Colorado has had on the season, and they make it 35-14. My favorite coaching say, coach is saying about the quarterback, he's got the stink about it. That's good. I like that. Not even quite sure what it means, but it, I know exactly what it means. That's Thomas Wright who took that hit and went down and has suffered at least a mild concussion here and he's going off the field he did not come back on to play after uh, he got run into by Vickers in the end zone so 544 left to go here in the fourth onside kick coming up you would expect that's what uh, that's what the Cowboys are looking for here Crosby approaches it and indeed does and there it will be played down that one got taken in a hurry Morrency of all people got moved up there <laughs> of course and handle the football. Join us tomorrow, ABC Sports, some of the PGA Tour's best. We'll tee off for the final round of the Michelin Championship. It'll be at Las Vegas. Live coverage will begin at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on ABC. Yeah, Las Vegas, it's at about 1,000 feet high. Nobody will ever not, move there. It's not going to carry like it would up here. <laughs> It'll be a first down and 10. Disappointing homecoming today for the Buffalo, but not for the fans who made it here from Oklahoma State. Well, you're Gary supposed Barnett's got to go back to the drawing board offensively. You're supposed to schedule Murray State for your homecoming, yeah. not the number 21, and probably they'll probably get into the top 15, I would think, if you're Oklahoma State. Lawrence is back in there on a first down and a 10 after the onside kick. 
Trying to go wide, not going to get there, taken down at midfield. Morrency hit, and that's Garrett Burrell who moves in to put the hit on. Talked about the coaches today who have some things in common, including a great long standing friendship. Well, Bill McCartney put together a heck of a staff in the mid 80s, and CU football was just not doing well. And Gary Barnett and Les Miles, Les Miles, a young offensive line coach, Gary told us a great story about Bill McCartney changed their offense three times within a season and a half. And one year, they spent three days driving all over the East Coast with no money. They had to do it in a car, four coaches in the car, that they actually took the 8-millimeter projector and plugged it into the cigarette lighter so they could study film from Pittsburgh on their two-back offense. Donovan Woods on the handoff. Gary Barnett had a great line for it. He, he called it two years of two days. <laughs> all wrapped up in one All in wrapped one up in a car for Gary Barnett. Doc? If you take a look at that staff, I mean, there were seven coaches on that staff that went on to be head coaches in college football. Of course, we mentioned Gary Barnett and Les Miles, but how about Jerry DiNardo, the current coach, head coach in Indiana? Lou Tepper at Illinois. There's a list. Logan at East Carolina had those big wins, upset wins over Miami and Georgia Tech. Hankowitz, the interim head coach at Arizona, of course, and Ron Vanderlinden, who was at Maryland. How about that staff that uh, Bill McCartney put together in 86? These guys learning from one of the best and going on to all be head coaches. Well, and, and you saw the late 80s and early 90s. They planted the seeds in the mid 80s with their recruiting and, of course, won a share of the national championship in 1990. Some of the best college football teams of all time. Marnsey again on the carry. He'll gain four yards on that one as the Cowboys continue to just eat it up on the ground. We've got 401 left to go. Another timeout will be taken here. Uh, Colorado, they're looking at the officials over there as to what they wanted, whether they wanted that timeout or not. Gary Barnett was calling out from the sideline on it. And while they uh, take it, we'll go back down. Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, yesterday when I was talking with Oklahoma State head coach Les Miles, I said, you know, I'm convinced that the reason I got a head coaching job at Oklahoma State was not because of my experience at the Dallas Cowboys or the fact that I was uh, experienced at Michigan under Bo Schimbeckler. It's my experience here in Colorado under uh, Bill McCartney, watching Bill McCartney build this program year after year after year, where they had to come from. He said that's what convinced the people, the board, the trustees in Stillwater that I was going to be their head coach. I had seen McCartney do it, and I knew how to do it to put my plan in. I knew what kind of vision McCartney had and what he taught me. And that, along with the experience that Bo Schimbeckler gave me, allowed me to be a head coach. And the rest, as they say, is history. This team going to 5-0 and here early on in 2004. What a great start for them. Here's Fire doing the kicking got the big rush that is going to be taken at the 10 yard line he started to run with it and then realized who I signaled for a catch <laughs> yeah, I better stop. so I better hold it in here Robinson takes it on the fair catch and Colorado will get it back good kicking day today for Cole Farden he's on the uh, Ray guy watch as far as putters are concerned on the season you know and, and before Les Miles was offered the job at Oklahoma State Gary Barnett offered him a job on his staff here at CU and Les had an idea that this Oklahoma State dirt cutter that uh, eventually went to Arizona State passed on the job didn't want to take the interview and they hired Les Miles and a lot of people said not a very sexy selection but you know what when you're five and oh and getting better every single year who cares how sexy it is you're looking at the top ten results and as you saw the top two one but not number three Georgia got knocked off today Cox back in the pocket that'll be completed at about the 15 yard line four yard gain judge out there to get it Evan judge the junior Palmer walk on who takes that one away they're playing the hurry up offense here again even though you're behind 35 14 it's not only the idea that you got a chance to stay right. in a game which you probably don't but it's Coach. a chance to work yeah. on yeah. things that you might want later on absolutely and, and like we've been talking about you know it looks like this guy James Cox has earned himself at least some playing time and don't I don't want anybody to misrepresent what I'm trying to say I think Joel Klatt who has a stiff neck and not playing in the second half he's still their starting quarterback and I'm sure Gary Barnett will say the same thing in his post game press conference but if this is a guy that you may have to rely on later in the season you want to know how does he do in the hurry up and let's get it on film and coach him up that's Jamie Thompson who's had a very strong game in the safety position coming out with the injured ankle or leg there and Thompson will be helped off the field so they have lost a couple as Thomas Wright another safety came out earlier after he had that hit with Sprague and after he had the hit with Vickers rather and they suffered a mild concussion. Well and, and Oklahoma State cannot start losing especially in a 4 2 5 alignment where you rely on three safeties with the remaining schedule that's coming up next for 
A&M at Missouri Oklahoma at Texas they can't start losing the strength truly the strength of their defense it'll be a second down and five Colorado with the football deep in their own territory in the 15 yard line Cox again back and he's going to get dumped sacked dropped the football it's still in play there was no whistle and Colorado will ultimately get it back on their own five yard line but a couple of turnovers taking place there as he got sacked Cox lost the football and then it bounced around around the five yard line and Colorado ended up finally on top of it on the recovery. Well this is Nathan Peterson this is a young man out of Tulsa Oklahoma. True freshman got his first start last week against Iowa State. He had three sacks in his first start in college. He was a spring football guy which is such a big deal when young men can graduate early from high school and come in and not only start learning the football but learn about the school and everything else but coach is so impressed with how this young man uses his hands. They get it back to lose yardage though a third down and 16 Cox out of the end zone another big rush he's got some room 10 and up to the 15 yard line as he's brought down it'll be a 10 yard gain but they needed 16 for the first down and the clock will run here with 238 left to go a lot of yardage eaten up in this game over 430 Oklahoma State. Colorado's had uh, over 430 yards. Vernon Grant down, cramping up. See him hanging on to the back of the leg. Want to remind you tonight's primetime lineup on ABC. Saturday movie of the week. Liar, liar. That will come your way tonight, beginning at 8 Eastern time. And Desperate Housewives, that's on at 10 Eastern. Our primetime lineup, ABC. I think I'm going to watch Desperate Housewives. Why did I, I think, think it's that? their advertising campaign that it's pulled the you witty in. writing it just pulled yeah. you in. I agree. Understand the lawn that. mowing and car washing <laughs> scenes. So well shot. The cinematographer is really great. The lighting aspect, the shading. Seems That's, like my kind of program. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> Still down on the field here and look, look like a cramping. I'm not going to think I'm going to talk about that anymore. <laughs> Vernon Grant. I mean, I don't. This isn't anything serious from what we see here, but it sure, certainly looked like it was cramping that was going on. And they're just trying to, boy, that hurts. You're just trying to get that loosened up a little bit. And you see him doing some toe touches there in order to feel a little better. Let's take a look at our Chevy players of the game. Lawrence, there you see the numbers. He has put up Vickers with Bobby Purify playing very little in this game. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Lawrence, another big game. Mm -hmm. And even though in the first half he seemed to be coming in and out, and you hardly noticed Vickers with Bobby Purify only six carries, 26 yards with the shoulder problems. Vickers, 13 carries 64 yards and nine receptions for 96 in the passing department uh, and you, you might be saying why are they going for him for there was just what you were talking about moments ago you know this is just let's see what these guys can do fourth down and six only three down Oklahoma State sending just three in a hit and an interception that'll be carried back to the 20 and back inside the 10 a little running room and touchdown Paul Duran there's a flag down Duran on the interception takes it in for the TD. Let's see what the flag is. Uh, I think they got Clint O'Neill for a tackle Touchdown. Yeah, on Nathan Peterson. Well, that they've got a couple of young guys that can really get after it on the defensive line for Oklahoma State. It's a TD, and Duran continues his big day, a 34-yard return. This was a pretty good run. Here's you're going to see the hold right here. But Duran with his second interception again. It, a guy who was a safety in high school and he's playing that just like a safety ate himself to the linebacker position at 240 pounds and here you see some of the running skills I'm sure he had to use as a quarterback in high school well, he barely made that he did caught some flack in the film room tomorrow had he not finished that <laughs> extra point attempt here is going to be up and Jason Ricks puts that one through so the Cowboys continue the onslaught their defense was offensive minded coming in they have continued that in this game and they've got a 42 to 14 lead it's almost uncanny how good they are taking the ball away they spend the first 15 minutes of practice every day on takeaway strips things like that and not only that but how to recover the ball which is key not only do you got to rip it out but you got to go get it so for Colorado today there have been three turnovers 
eight penalties and they have been costly penalties in at least four of those occasions key plays and seven dropped passes. It has been for Gary Barnett and the Buffalo a game of mistakes yeah. and take nothing away from Oklahoma State. I mean every time they've made a mistake Oklahoma State has converted it and taken advantage of it and then some. When you look across the Big 12 how often do you get to see a coach have that much fun on the sideline. I can't believe he still got the headset on. <laughs> yeah. They're just telling jokes at this he might, point. He might have some tunes going. They're in an outstanding linebacker, and he has shown it here today as he takes that interception in. 42 14, 207 left to go. Colorado will get the football back again. Cox intercepted for the second time in the game. Barden, who's been doing the kicking all day, boots that one back again into the end zone. Wheatley bobbled it, got to play it. Five, nothing goes right. He's down at the six-yard line. Well, Paul Duran has led this team in tackles the last two years, leading again this year. And you, you kind of hear everyone saying, you know, he doesn't do anything good. He's just kind of consistent. Well, he's been more than consistent today. Fights off the block, makes a great tackle. Excellent read. Came back on Kloppenstein, made that catch, and this time just reading the quarterback's eyes. So, you know, don't say this guy's not too flashy. Two interceptions, one return for a touchdown. I would say that that's uh, pretty good stuff. He gets a star on the helmet or whatever I, it is that's I, given yeah. up. A high five and add a boy. Add a boy. If he was in the NFL, he'd get a little bonus. First down and 10. Ball is at the six yard line. And Vickers again on the carry. Brian White has come on to play a quarterback now, the third quarterback we have seen in this game for Colorado. Let's go down to Doc. We talked about the fact that Paul Duran was a great athlete in high school and uh, the fact that he was a wrestler, a two time all state champion. Get, get his record was 140 and two in high school in Dell City High School in Oklahoma. And he said as a wrestler, he learned a lot about footwork and balance and leverage that helped him make the transition from being an option quarterback in high school to being a linebacker in college. Footwork and balance very critical for a wrestler. And you saw today very very critical for a very good linebacker and, and critical for a sideline report. Absolutely. Yeah. Dr. Punch was a quarterback wrestler in high school. Second down and five on the carry and a two yard gain. Vickers again carries that one up. Well this one has been a long day for the Buffalo. Our executive producer Mike Pearl Bob Toms our senior producer Bob Goodrich coordinating producer Mitch Green downstairs in our truck. Producing Margaret Gallen, our director, Steve Feinberg, Will Belke, Bill Herbstman, Rich Hummel and John Graff, Kevin Wendling, and Barry Wickton working here. We've got Rod Eldred, Paul Newman working beside me, Dave Dare upstairs with us, Jason Coates. Those are the folks who make this all possible. We sincerely appreciate it. Alex Wilson, our stage manager. Mr. Dare, who's also an attorney. Uh, our spotter. We like to keep attorneys <laughs> yeah, going exactly. here. You know what I mean? Huh? I feel safe up here. I mean, if Who I else could have were to get into any kind of trouble, at least I'm represented. And you got Paul Newman doing stats. I mean, how much good is that? <laughs> you, you can pick up some relish. And that's uh, played up to the 24 yard line. As uh, time running down here, we may be the last people out of this stadium because everybody else has left. No, the families are going to stay. Families are still yeah. in. Yeah. Families and the announcers. White in at quarterback. Third quarterback we've seen. Just a matter of running this clock down. Colorado Bobby purified today only six carries 26 yards shoulder problems. That's going to be an issue this coming week. How serious is it. Is it going to keep him out. Vickers pick up the pace today for them. But with purify not playing if that's going to go into more games that's serious. Yep. Yeah. And you know Iowa State coming up then at Texas A&M Texas at home at Kansas Kansas State and then at Nebraska. Part of the snap. Full start. Number 77 of the offense. Five yards. Still first down. I think there's a give and take. Bobby Purify made it public knowledge that he was not going to sit on the sidelines and watch after what happened to him last year with his ankle. But uh, we saw him a couple of times really favoring that shoulder, and it could not have gotten better in today's game. Colorado, uh, they are going to be 0-2, and, and it is only the 6-0-2 start in league play since 1948. But 5 and 0 oh on the other side for Oklahoma State as they have gotten it done with a 42 to 14 win in this game. That's going to be the final. 
ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. You can search ABC Sports. Fred Cunningham, Dr. Jerry Punch, and all of our crew here in Boulder. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Big day, Oklahoma State 21. When they started this weekend, will probably move up after this. From Boulder, we bid you a good Saturday night. So long, everybody.